Then fly to home But if you wanna travel Then go alone Yeah, what's the point in us If I never know Yeah, if you're gonna leave I'ma let you go I'm tired of the pain Go
I guess I had my bad days, but it doesn't mean I lost my styling. Where were you when my heart was? It was about the third week into Kathy's weight loss battle where things really started to go downhill. She was eating salads four or five times a day. She was on the ground. I thought time would prove that you would stick around. I guess time starts to a king without his crown. Now I'm breaking, you're faking, girl. You never made a sound. There's not a single day that passes without you on my mind. Not even one minute can end up before you come around. I hope for the days when I see your face here before me. I hope for the time to tell me in your arms. Oh, I wish that you were here to give me everything I want. But I know that life's unfair and we can't always have it. In my head there's a wall I can't control That's where my demons get in And it's taken me years Now it was clear My shadow is my only twin And the ones that love me the most And the ones that
You, but it's not okay Whatever can I walk away oh, yeah. Can still see your face So tell me what to do Cause I can't find a way Baby, please just tell me If I'm, tell me If I'm, tell me If I'm fine Tell me if I'm, tell me If I'm, tell me If I'm, baby
All right, everyone out there, we appreciate your patience. We know we're 20 minutes past our start time. One of our teams wasn't ready for tonight. We're getting everything together. We do have the lobby set up, so very, very soon, we're going to have the Jets taking on the Warriors. Once again, we appreciate the patience in chat. Hey, you know what? As long as you're sitting around waiting for your snack, you know, maybe you got some popcorn in the microwave, uh, let me know in chat who you have winning this matchup. But until we are back, uh, we're just going to be sitting around waiting for this lobby to really get into order, get both teams in here. So until then, sit tight, guys.
and welcome back to our coverage of the NECC. We've got some League of Legends action coming at you. The Jackson Jets going up against the Midland Warriors. Very, very exciting. We apologize for the delay. A uh, little bit of miscommunication on Midland's end, but we are all here. The Warriors are ready to rumble, and we are in the pro draft, as you should see here. Uh, the Jets will be on the blue side, Midland on the red team to kick things off here for game number one. So we do see Rek'Sai locked in the bands while we were away. Mordekaiser, LeBlanc, Lucian, Thresh, Malphite, and Jin. Uh, the only thing to note is there will be no Samira. So anything that cannot be played in the World Championship, I believe is what the standard we're going by is, will not be able to be played here. So you will not be seeing Samira. Uh, there wasn't a consensus on Yon. So if someone locks in Yon, it's allowed. If not, it's not allowed. Uh, I don't think anyone will be playing Yon. As we do see Nakali locked in here. So a lot of burst potential coming out right away from the side of Midland. We did see Akali play to great, great effect last week by the eraser uh, we'll see what they follow that up with both teams keeping themselves very very open i mean rexai and akali uh they, they don't play towards maybe a very very specific composition you can't draft too much squishier uh given you have the collies we do see a tank locked in with sejuani there uh but rexai is a good centerpiece in a lot of teams in my opinion rexai can engage team fights by alting onto that squishy can be a great part of the pick composition right with the ulti same for the same reason so we're going to see the ari locked in here I think this denotes much more of a pick composition. You know, if the Ari can land that charm, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Rek'Sai can really get the engage going. Excited to see how the Jets continue picking this out as they do select in that Misfortune, which will give them a lot of damage if they're going for picks, but also in team fights does give them a lot of versatility. You are never truly out of the game with a good placed MF ulti. Braum coming through. I talked about the tankiness that you need to pair with that Akali. There it is is the best of buds in the frail yard said juani brahm coming out on the same team as we are going to go into our second round of bands here as we do see a leona band out would not be surprised to see another support band out here by the warriors it, it's it's tough banning top laners in my mind right now unless you go for the orn unless you go for the set uh but there's a lot of supports that can engage that act as playmakers that i might want to clear out leona chief amongst them ash does get taken off the table i think banning adc is very smart here considering you already have the mf locked in we saw the absolute damage that ash could do last week as well some insane alties coming through swain also off the table i'm going to assume that's targeted at support swain have not seen a lot of top swain of late or Going to the memory banks, not not really ever. It's 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 been played. You know, Swain can get big, especially with the ulti as Twitch get taken off the table. World's favorite Twitch there. Uh, we've seen great great Twitch play come out of tactical on the world stage. Shout out NA. Yep, yep. You, you know chat. You know what's good. You know NA. That's what's good. Uh, but that will be taken off the table. Two ADCs. We're gonna see how the Warriors handle that. Will they go for their ADC right now? There's no reason to rush it. You really can't wait. I think taking your prio pick on the top lane is probably what's important here. Orn, set, still on the table. We got picks like Shen, still on the table. They do have two beefy characters already, but they will go with the Ezreal. Uh, this this really means that they're trying to counter pick top lane. Uh, they, they have the priority pick. They're going to toss it back over to the Jets, and they're going to send it right back. Interested to see what these last two picks are. They still need a top laner. They still do need a support. The team is looking somewhat squishy right now. Rek'Sai can soak up a little bit of damage on the front line. But I think the Jets are going to need someone else. They pick up that Zyra. Zyra MF bot lane is going to be hot. I can tell you right now, that is a whole lot of damage to deal with. Zyra's E into an MF ulti, it's over. That, that, that's a wrap. Uh, there's not much that can be done there. Most characters not going to survive that. However, Braum Shield, Sejuani might have enough beefiness. I would not be surprised to see a Yumi come out on the side of the Warriors here. Yumi, Ezreal, such a potent combo. Top laner has to be picked here, and it will be a Scion. All right, we've got we've got a spicy composition coming out from the Jets. Like I said, I'm, I'm expecting a Yumi. We're going with an Aatrox. What is happening? Oh, my goodness. Some wacky compositions right out of the gate here in match number and game number one of match number one. Looks like everyone is ready in chat. Uh, my only instinct here is that it's going to be an Aatrox support. That's that's all I've got. We've seen it. I've seen it personally a few times collegiately. It has rolled before. This is a pretty tanky 
team comp. There's a lot of bruisers, a lot of health bars here as we're waiting to get into it. I really, really like the picks and bans for both squads coming out here. I like that through some curveballs. I think Yumi would have been the better, the safer pick. You know, you scale into the late game. But they said, we want to bully. We want to get right on top of that MF. We want to get right on top of that Zyra with this Aatrox. It might pay off. It could pay off in dividends. Absolutely massively. But that Aatrox gets shut down and doesn't get the gold that you're hoping. Not much is going to happen. So we're going to see early on if the Warriors will get some early kills in the bot lane generating gold. Because that's the only real reason you go with this Aatrox. And in my mind, running down the line here for the Midland Warriors, we do have the Ezreal. Very safe pick, but depends how aggressive it can be played. You know, with the Chrono Shift moving, scooting in and out of the lane, we're going to see how well piloted that is down the line. Actually, I guess Brahms for it. What, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? Aatrox is top. Wow. I completely forgot that a Brahm lock him. So Aatrox top. <laughs> Disregard everything I've said about Midland for the past five minutes. I got so zoned in this Aatrox pick. Uh, Aatrox top. We got Brahm support. I have seen the Aatrox support four, four or five times in Seawall. So that fact is true. But other than that, we will see the Brahms were coming out. Brahm as well is a very, very passive lane. Uh, you know, Brahm, pretty passive. And once you hit six, you can go in, except for level one. Brahm is arguably the strongest level one support. You have two forms of CC, uh, which despite having only one ability, you have the Q, which applies the slow, the passive, which can root provided you get the autos off. So I'd like to see some level one action coming out from the Warriors. Down the line, we do have a Kali in the mid lane. A lot of damage coming through. A lot of pick potential. Sejuani rounding them out in the jungle. Does give them a lot of ability to team fight. So that's what I'm excited to see. Uh, they aren't built to team fight a lot, a lot. Uh, that Braum is, obviously, with the ulti. And Sejuani is. The other three pieces, not so much. So I'm excited to see if that Sejuani can act as a playmaker. Because if you CC everybody... It doesn't matter whether or not your team is designed a team fight. You're going to be able to find wins in team fights, get gold, propel the game forward. In the top lane, rounding out the rest of the team, we do have that Aatrox that we were convinced was the port, but was not in the top lane. Uh, Aatrox is an absolute beast. If you let Aatrox farm in the top lane, you're going to be in for a bad, bad time late game. Interested to see what Skuzrat can do on that in the top lane. Should be a good matchup with the Scion Yo-Yo Dog. Scion's not, not super, super popular, so must be a comfort pick for Yo-Yo Dog. Excited to see what they can do on that as we transition to talking about the Jackson Jets. First of all, Jackson Jets, phenomenal alliteration. I don't know what year Jackson was founded as a college, but gosh darn it, they got the mascot name right. Jackson Jets, we're going to start in the top lane talking about Yo-Yo Dog. Scion's kid is very, very farm, depending on my mind, because you get the, the scaling max health, you get bigger and bigger and bigger. The big opportunity for me is this ulti. How can Yo-Yo Dog use the ulti to make plays across the map to potentially gank mid from top lane in a moment's notice? If they can capitalize on that ultimate ability, I think they can do well in this game. Moving down to Starbucks, 135, playing that rec side. We talked about the rec side before when we were in the pro draft. Very versatile, can be a brawler, can do a lot of damage, can single players out, which is both valuable, trying to generate picks, and also to single out the back line and team fight. So we're going to see how Starbucks can pilot this Rek'Sai. It very much feels that this Rek'Sai is one of two big playmakers on the team. One of three, we'll toss Zyra in there. Uh, but moving on to our next big playmaker, Haspi, is already piloted by King Zushlar. Uh, hitting charms is going to be this game. If you can find the charm onto Akali, that's it. Stick a butter in a furnace. What Now you see me, now you don't. And it's not because I'm in the smoke. It's because I'm six feet deep. If they can shut down the killer guy early on with some nice, nice charms, that's one way they can swing the game in their favor. Down to the bot lane, Misfortune and Zyra. As I said, Zyra's, Zyra is a playmaker. Um, I'm just more looking towards this Ari. You can hit the Eve. You can hit the R in big team fights. You can definitely turn the tide of this game. I really like the MF-Zyra combo. Uh, it gives you a chance. It gives you a puncher's chance in every single team fight, right? A good Zyra ulti layered on top of the Misfortune ulti. Not only to get the CC so the rest of the team can get in there. You have so much damage. Uh, to boot, if Trent in the bot lane, piloting Zyra, can get some plants down. Uh, you know, they grow and they, they do more damage than the ulti. Uh, they believe their attack speed increases as well. You can really, really lay down a lot of dot damage that nobody sees coming. It's damage over time for the uninitiated. I'm excited to see what can be done 
overall, I do feel that coming out, the Jets have a much, much stronger team fighting composition. But if this game goes late and we see a lot of skirmishes, I think Midland might be able to just sneak this one out. We will see Midland definitely favored coming into this matchup if you just consider the ELOs. This is the first time we've seen either team on stream. So that is very, very exciting for both of these two chat. Who are we at? I see Scoozbomb uh, is, is putting Let's Go Warriors in chat. All right, all right. I see you, I see you. I As I said, I believe the Warriors should be definitely heavily favored to win this, but the team fighting coming out from the other side is very, very strong. So it's a bit up in the air on that end. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you are in chat for this first match of the night, our second match of the night, tipping off around 8 p.m. We got a little late start here, so we'll see how the schedule shakes out. Will Pitt, the Randolph, making Yellow Jackets up against the Hood Blazers. Hood Blazers, a team we've seen a few times on stream. They just haven't been able to quite put the pieces together. And I think a lot of that rests on their mid lane play. We're going to see if they run it back and prove this week, or it's more of the same thing regardless excited for that one i wish yellow jackets was like an actual yellow jacket not a b because a i'm allergic to them and b because blazer's another kind of jacket like we, we got we got the jacket off later on but alas a yellow jacket is really referring to the wasp unfortunate unfortunate i'll uh, be yeah, for the time being we do have the jackson jets up against the midland warriors 40 more seconds for spectate delay a few more seconds while we load and we appreciate you staying patient with us very very excited to get into it. 22 people be on right now. We salute you. We are excited. We're ready for this week. Um, there's lots and lots of exciting stuff going on in the ESC. I guess that's something to get on my soapbox and talk about real quick. If you haven't read the article that the NECC Games account uh, tweeted earlier today, you should definitely go read it. It's a phenomenal read. If you're here, you're a fan of collegiate esports, you're a fan of esports in general. Such a great read about season zero, the trial season here in the NECC, just kind of getting their feet under them. Uh, more success than they initially pictured. Uh, I believe the article says they figured they had 20 teams playing. We're at 30 competing right now amongst a number of different games. We've got Valorant, we've got Madden, we've got League of Legends, we've got Rocket League. So, so much is happening. There's so much esports content that if you're a big gamer, if you enjoy the collegiate scene, uh, there's... You're just of time fan i mean heck just legends fan here worlds is happening you're watching what could prove a phenomenal match and if skins get wins the jets are going to get the dub here uh that coven coven zyra prestige edition whoo that is a good one i'm not i'm not gonna hold you in chat that is a very very good one very close to loading here. Like I said, watch out for some sneaky level one plays coming through from the Warriors. We're now in the game. Five seconds on the clock. Welcome to our first match of the night. Game number one. The Jackson Jets going up against the Midland Warriors. I'm excited. You should be too. Watch out for this level one action from Orbit. Leading out. For the Jets, we've got Yo-Yo Dog, Starbucks, King Zuslar, Mr. Sparaco, and Trent pulling it up on the support end. On the other side, coming out for the Midland Warriors in the top lane, Scoo's Rat Tractors in the jungle, the killer guy in the mid lane, Jensen, rounding them out with ADC and the squad at support. Excited to get into this near No level in action. Both teams coming out with just a five point. So they have the advantage with the Braum early on. They have the CC. You come out with the Zyra. Ian, the other does get a little bit spooky. I think it's wise and it's safe to do that, especially the composition, in my mind, plays much, much better into the late game. Uh, <laughs> uh, just <laughs> talk to my director here for a second. Uh, you can just let it play. You click on a character and then just take your hands off. Director Cam will do the rest for you eyeball on the bottom left you're gonna want to click that and then click the checkbox next to scoreboard and timers and then just crumble hands off you're all good to just let it go as we are gonna see the teams 
start in the bot side here for the Jets. On the other side, they will be starting top. So watch for that action here. Uh, top to bottom versus bottom to top ganking. That Aatrox will have a slight disadvantage here early on in the top lane. We talked about how important it is for Scion to get that farm under their belt. Get that XP. And I'm, I'm looking to see how aggressive will Trent and Mr. Sparacco be here in the bot lane they do so much damage as a combination how early do you want to go and i think if you if you attempt at level two first you can really really play for a kill uh you talk about the zyra cc coming through the e the damage the adc is inherited you early on and there it is orbit taking a chunk guardian is propped already they have to push this but they're not gonna hit level two first jensen here and orbit hitting level two they're gonna do a lot of damage trent in a lot of trouble the stun coming through the heal is dropped first blood will not be dropped however Mr. Sparacco coming in, laying down some damage, going to save their support there. Just trying to farm under tower. Jensen and Orbit with an aggressive play. You got to respect that coming out from them. Hitting level two first, acknowledging it. We're going to see a gank in the top lane. Starbucks coming through, gets the flash out, and that's going to be massive in the top lane. Yo-Yo Dog going to play a lot more aggressively now, knowing that the flash has been expended from Smooth Rat Orbit, moving around the wave, trying to find something there. Oh, double root coming through. Big plays there from Trent, but they're not going to find the follow-through damage. Still is early on, but we're going to see if that matters as the lane continues. Deusler does find some damage on the killer guy as well. The Jets looking solid here early on. As we said, definitely not the favorites in this matchup. Jensen, I may have spoke too soon. Coming in, Mr. Sparacco. But the exhaust drop. First blood will go down to the support. Trent runs out over it, eats a tower shot. It's well worth it for them. Midland scooping up first blood at just under three and a half minutes from their bot lane very scary to have what i would argue the better early game composition and still give up first blood we're going to see what they can do in the bot lane to maybe salvage some of this we do see sejuani on the bot side first dragon will be spawning in a minute 10 here starbucks still just comes trolling around the top lane trying to get that scion ahead it seems Gotta be careful. You don't want to mess around on a tower, especially with that problem. As we said, so many forms of CC. Starbucks here taking a bit of the jungle, but Sejuani not in position to respond, really. Going to start running the top side, but I think the Raptors will already be gone. It's going to be a little too late. Double recall here in the bot lane. Q not going to be in time from Trent. Here is Tractors. Gonna find Starbucks. We're gonna have some one on one in the jungle. Starbucks just trying to run away. Does use the flash to get out of there. Will escape, but. Has to burn some Babu resources in the process. Yo, yo, dog going very low. And oh, what a flash to get out of there. Yo, yo, dog escaping, keeping the game at a one kill deficit. Killer guy and King Zeus. Like, ooh, nearly lands. Approaching level six here. You got to be careful from the Ari. Perfect execution. Puts in so much damage. The mobility coming out from both dashes. So scary once you do hit level six. We'll see if the killer guy can do wave pushing in on the bot side. Jensen in orbit just trying to clear it out, trying to sell some gold and farm. Doing it well there. He's like, you like to see the patience. He's, just, he's just, this is a combo that has had some games together long some time, at the very least, have played a lot of League of Legends. We know that solo queue and playing fives is a completely different beat. Trent does hit the Eater pick. So much damage on the back end, and this Zyra is going to be down right there. Jensen does get the kill this time. The bot lane cooking charm does land a lot of damage coming through. Killer guy able to dash out of there. But wow. This combo of Jensen and Orbit taking over the game from the bot lane early on. Killer guy dropping the smoke, trying to find an opportunity. Both mid laners just about to hit level six. And then I expect an all in from one or the other. And definitely play aggressive or passive with either of those alties. Orbit still trying to find an angle here. But they are just bowling the bot lane. Here's a gank coming through. Starbucks does get the knockups. The killer guy dashing in and out. Slip and slide. Tractors coming through. King Zuzlar running with Starbucks to tow. Killer guy hopping back in. There's the ulti. Damage coming through. Starbucks going low. But at the end of the day, nothing will come of it. Just some spells. Traded summoner smells burn. King Zuzlar has to use the barrier and the flash to survive that one. Dragon is being pinged up here, and they will get on this very first infernal drag of the match. Should allow the bot lane to farm up a little bit. So if Mr. Sprocko and Trent are smart, I'm trying to push the wave a little bit here. Get any amount of gold that we can to salvage. We're losing the objective already. We have to try to do something to accrue some sort of value. Yo-Yo Dog just trying to farm out of tower here. Scoozrat pushing 
the advantage right now. Knockup not going to come through there. Scoozret does avoid it. Gets it, hits him for a tower shot. Yo, yo, dog. You got to be careful under tower. Heed the warning of that shot. You got to be very careful. Scoozret probably just waiting for Flash to come up for the all-in, honestly. Just picking their battles right now. Hold for the Flash. Then you have a real chance to all-in. Back from the bot lane. Orbit, Jensen, both have their summoners all available right now we are gonna see the aatrox back off the top lane excuse us i know what i'm gonna back give myself something nice maybe even teleport back to lane and i'm gonna have that flash be able to dive oh excuse me cancels the back starts the channel get it and here it is popping the all e getting in here excuse rat yo yo dog plays it very well though does get the knock up Ooh, tractors thinking about coming in but they're not going to find the cube there so does pop the ulti doesn't get anything in return Aatrox probably have to back off of that one. Excuse me, Sion probably gonna have to back off of that one. E coming through, not gonna hit Trent, trying to find an angle. They are just getting outclassed right now in the bot lane. Look at the farm differential. 58 to 42 on the ADCs, not even counting the executed minions. Both top laners do stick around. They channeled the recalls for a minute. Think about it. Stick around. Yo, yo, dog. In serious trouble here. The flash coming through. Scoo's rack getting the kill one on one in the top lane. It is a three kill to zero lead right now for the Warriors. Mid coming out and they have come out strong. Eight minutes, of just over a two and a half K gold lead. Looking very good. The only places they don't have a kill advantage in the jungle and in the mid lane that might change right here. Tractors fighting Starbucks for the blue of Tractors putting out a lot of damage in the 1v1. Smite coming through. Oh, the fight has bled over into the top lane. Yo yo dog, Scoo's rat going low. Tractors trying to find some sort of support. Flip the script and dip the chip. Yo yo dog going low. And here comes the mid laner. Scion will go down. Starbucks and the killer guy gonna duke it out. Yo yo dog, second four flipping through with a kill. Will be picked up as the Ari rotates in a massive for the Jets. Wow, that one got them pretty close to back in it on the kill scoreboard. Trailing less than a K gold now. Very big play for them. They just have to get this bot lane online. Orbeezy taking up so much in the front line. Jensen, they are just absolutely bullying the bot lane right now. They've got to level up on the Zyra. Once that Zyra does hit level 6, they've got a chance in just about every multiple player engagement but until then not looking too great for them tractors coming through can they get the steal it's a smite of oh tractors taking starbucks lunch money and hoping for a little more the ulti coming through starbucks in serious trouble can't quite find the tunnel Woo, tractors great play there hops over the wall says thank you very much i'm gonna have my cake and eat it too picks up the eye of the herald picks up the kill Picks the lead back up for the team. Really puts them right back in the driver's seat with that play. Good stuff coming through from Tractors. Not quite 10 minutes into the game now. And a version of gold lead coming out. Alti coming through. Scoozrat playing this well. Does avoid the knockup. Yo-Yo Dog going to probably be dead here. Scoozrat just has to find a bit more damage. Doesn't have the flash available. Ooh, puts that in. Continues. Going to take two tower shots on the back end. Doesn't look like it's really going to matter. Trying to collapse up here. They're not going to find Killer Guy. Yo-Yo Dog playing with fire right now. Ooh, look at this aggressive play from the Scion. Sticking around, does get the damage off with the shield. Very greedy to recall right in front of the tower. I'm not sure what Yo-Yo Dog is thinking. Excuse me, right? we're going to move over to the bot lane here. Ooh, CC coming through. There's the Zyra ulti. They're not going to find much, but on the back end, Starbucks going to go down there. Tractors does pick up the kill. Good counter gank there. Both junglers in the vicinity trying to find something. There's the MF ulti. It's not going to be enough. Jensen barely staying alive. Woo! Close call for Jensen and Orbit there. Orbit does use a stopwatch, goes into stasis, but Jensen looks like they're in trouble for a second. CC coming through. Tractors does drop the plants. Tractors going to pick up one. Will they find the kill on a Mr. Sparacco? They may just do. Here comes the help from the jungle. It's not going to matter. They pick up the double kill before Shut the jungle up. dies on the crackback. Starbucks is going to pick it up, but not worth it for them. They lose the tower. They lose their whole bot lane. They are down 5k gold. Yo, yo, dog, what are you doing? Scoozer at picking up yet another in the top lane. The gold lead grows. The kill lead just grows. The Warriors look like they came to play today. Woo. 
lays and starve them. We are not even at 15 minutes yet. You, can, you could even FF if this was a solo queue game of yet. The Warriors definitely brought it. Eyes on the prize, and that prize is Dragon right now. Charm coming through. The killer guy going to take a decent chunk of damage. Starbucks looking for a gank here. Here's killer guy. Nothing going to come that good. Patient play there. Dragon is still up. Neither team really making a move at it just yet. We are going to see teams try to slot, set up some vision here. It looks like the Warriors are going to have priority over this objective. Ooh, bit of a scrap here. Going in. School's wrap. Big frontliner trying to do so much damage. He's absolutely deleted. The Zyra ulti will come through. Does get a lot of knockups, but there's no follow-up there. So Trent goes down. Drops the ulti and gets off a minuscule amount of damage. They can't follow up with the CC. It looks like they're going to be able to get this dragon here. Some miracle steal off the back end is their only hope. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. They do get up the dragon. They are three for three on neutral objectives right now. One infernal drag, one ocean drag. And they do also scoop up the Rift Herald earlier in the game off the back of some strong play from Tractor. Ooh, speaking of the devil, heading back topside. There will be another trail spawning in two minutes. Oh, Tracker's going to walk in 1v3. This should be a dead Tracker's. Can they catch up? Orbit, can they turn this one around? Big knockup. Tracker's going to go down. Ezra Ulti coming through. Not going to find much. Scoo's right 1v2 in the bot lane. Does pick up one. Ulti coming through from Orbit. Good flash. Scoo's rat trying to find the second kill on the Trent here. Looks for the action in the mid lane. Will die down a little bit. Scoo's rat. A few more autos on a Trent. Should have it. There it is. This fight here. Oh, Zoo Shark goes down as we cut back in. The killer guy trying to find another one on the back end. Starbucks just running away. Has the flat the smite available. Will use it there. And they're going to give up for Scoop to scoop up that scuttle grab. Another solid fight across the board from Midland. They do get the double kill in the bot lane. That's going to give them a lot of pressure on the bottom half of the map. We do see the lane swap coming through. Very wise decision. They got the first tower on the bot side. No reason to not send your dual lane to the top side. Apply a lot of pressure considering Scoodrack can 1v2 in the bot lane. Gank coming through. Starbucks. They're going to chain CC. Might not matter. Jensen going very low. Look at the play here. Oh, Starbucks goes down. Jensen, a shred of HP will go down as well. Braum 1v1 with Yo-Yo Dog in the top lane. We're coming to the bot lane here. Scoots Rat fighting that Mr. Sparkle. Oh, Scoots Rat taking a tower shot that doesn't even matter. Rat, massive 1v2 situation. Gonna go down. Ari picks up the kill. Tractor's in the top lane fighting with Orbit here. Yo-Yo Dog gotta run and they will just let Yo-Yo Dog escape their under tower. Or will they? Killer guy coming through. Looking for the damage. Find some of it, but not enough to seal the deal. Yo-Yo Dog going to be allowed to jet back here. The large lead remains north of 5k gold right now for the Warriors. They are doing it and doing it with style right now. Ooh, what a blazing start. And we're going to see the killer guy just back here. Solid play on the Akali right now. Very, very impressed with Scoo's right. Six kills already racked up. Two deaths, but also two assists. The killer guy going to be able to do a significant amount of damage on this tower probably not going to be able to scoop it up just given the state of the wave orbit ganking through the mid lane here just walking it down lane just up a lot a lot of damage that ezreal is getting scary has the man immune completed working their way towards that next sheen item very scary once that try for ezreal you do not want to they're one on one. It's a lot of damage. There's some mobility. You can use that E to engage. You can use the E to escape. Just so, so much in the kit. Looks like we might see a scrap in the jungle here. Bit of a 3v2 in the favor of mid lane. 2v1 in the mid lane. Jensen there. Jensen might just be able to take out the 2v1. Yeah, look how passive they're playing. They do. Jensen right now. No reason to fight Jensen right now. Knock up. Not going to come through. Yo Yo Dog. Ooh, killer guy hopping in. Still has that ulti available. This is going to do a lot, a lot of damage there in the top lane. Scion going to back off. Think about backing. They do send Rek'Sai to the top side. Killer guy. Trying to just run away from Starbucks here. Does dash. Starbucks might find the kill. Killer guy just going to run under tower. Hops back in. Here's Tractors. Oh my goodness. The counter get came through. The knock up on the back line. Tractors pops the ulti. Starbucks going to go down. Yo, yo, dog. Next on the chopping block. But here is Trent coming through. The support to the rescue. As your ulti. Dump kill coming through. Tractors playing very well this game. 632 Orbit coming through. This fight's not over yet.
they do take down the scion after death passive and they're pinging up that neutral objective squeeze rat trying to close the gap there and king zushar not going to find the distance on to the rift herald trying to go two for two on these four the game four for four on neutral objectives overall claiming the first two drags of the game tower will go down in the mid lane courtesy of jensen Whew. the warriors looking very very strong right now the jets have to find some kind of way to recoup value later as this game goes i mean the goal differential is nearing 10k that charm going to miss on the e starbucks in the area scoos rat gonna walk away from that fight probably honestly didn't have to uh, i believe in 1v1 and 1v2 as well scoos rat already gonna be a little rate to respond there the charm doesn't go through starbucks does get the knockup scoos rat probably thinking about the die here oh my god look at that damn it Woo! with one swing of the sword fells the mighty starbucks going down 3v1 situation. Scooze Rat. Do they have anything up their sleeve? Taking on Yo-Yo Dog first. Now running away. Hot Pursuit coming from the rest of the team. Trying to turn around. Ezra Lee coming through. Gonna put down some damage in the back line. Scooze Rat essentially 1v3 right now. Trent here to join the party. Ezreal crashing in. Can they find a kill? Trent going so low there. Scooze Rat. Oh my goodness. Another one. Unstoppable right now. 8-2-2. Two and two. A 200 gold bag on their end. Jensen trying to collapse and find some more kills here. Starbucks popping over the wall. Oh, Jensen undeniably in a position they'd rather not be in. The ulti coming through will go down. But here they come. Come, Mr. Sporeko gonna get brought back so low. One more, I'll do it. Who's right? They're go to tower. Yo Yo Dog going low. They juggle the aggro. They pick up the go to Yo Yo Dog. Starbucks in the 1v2 situation. Oh my goodness. The Warriors have unleashed a massacre onto the map. Wow, the Jets can do nothing but sit idly by and get the lead. And Trent with a nice play there. Does get the knockup. Schools are at very low. Charms miss. They need big play here and they find it with the Ari. Pops the bear, probably a little unnecessarily, but you can never be too careful. So they do end up finding three kills on the back end. But whoo, the Warriors imposing their will this game right now. They have a massive lead north of 10k gold. This next dragon's coming up in five minutes. That will give them the soul. That will effectively end the game, in my opinion. If you're the Jets, you have to find some way to have a chance to steal that dragon. I mean, talk about having Starbucks on the wreck side. There is a ton of mobility coming through, so the opportunity is there, but you have to priority. You have to get vision. You have to get bodies on the pit first. Unless you can really believe in a backside contest where Starbucks can just sneak through, get the steal. Regardless, you have to have a game plan for this next dragon or this game will be over in an absolute hurry. And we see the Warriors doing the right thing here. They're clearing the vision in the top side. They're taking control of the map slowly, getting rid of wards. They're trying to see if they can find a pick here. Yo, yo, dog. Oh my gosh, look at Jensen's damage. Absolutely nuts. Not even going to go for the kill. Just starting to farm up the wave. Jensen does have that Triforce completed. The man immune has transformed into a mermana. Go dog going so low. Hopping in there. They might find that kill. There it is. Jensen gets it. Ari coming through. They do land the charm. Jensen going low, but there's Tracker's ulti. Yo, yo, dog. Oh my goodness. Another massacre, but Mr. Baracko comes through. Does put the kill onto Jensen here. And they're not going to go any further. The CC coming. But feast your eyes on the mid lane. They do get a tower. Scoos Rat nearly puts up the kill onto Starbucks. You got to be careful with Scoos Rat around. Can hop over that wall, Starbucks. Oh, no. Trent. Oh, no. What's going to happen here? Just patiently waiting. Scoos Rat coming through. Starbucks. Oh, they don't find the CC there. Scoos Rat. 1v3 situation. They will find the first kill. Can they find a few more? You got to land the damage on this Baracko first. And they do. The 1v3 under tower. Trent escaping for the time being. How long can he run from Scoos Rat Tractor? Joining the party a little late. The charm coming through. Ari. 
have the damage. It doesn't look like it. Tracker stuck on that side of the wall. Can they get their E up in time? They cannot. Shut down Gold, but here comes the killer guy on the back end. Has a lot of damage. The knockup's gonna miss. There's the ulti from the killer guy. Going to scoop up yet another kill for this warrior team. Yo, yo, dog, you gotta be careful under the tower. Not going to find the knockup. Scoo's rat is going to connect that. No damage to follow up on it. Orbit. Gotta be careful. I mean, despite having the big lead, that is still a support staring down the top laner. Don't want to give away any free kills, but it's tough. Gold lead nearing 15k here for the Warriors coming in. School's rat. Oh, misses the abilities there. Can't quite find it. Brom Alti is going to come through. Starbucks. Oh my gosh. Trent going to get the lead. Starbucks. The chopping block flashes through, but Scoo's Rat is not done yet. Looking for more. Is going to find the CC. Can't get the last auto down. Woo. Scoo's Rat. Just dangerous. Absolutely dangerous. Just at any given moment can scoop up a lot of kills. The Jets are looking like it's going to be a loss here in game number one. As I said, they need, they need to get the Dragon here. They have to find some way to either stall it out or steal the dragon. Coming back in here, King Zuzlar, not where you want to be. That's a lot of damage coming through. Barrier, Skoozrat, still continuing pursuit here. 3v1 situation. Skoozrat says, bring him on, the more the merrier. 4v1 now. MF Alti coming through. They can't quite find anything there, but they do. The Baron shut down goal, being handed over the MF. Mr. Sparacco, that's your one in. Big team fights with the MF faulty. Keep your eye on that MF. 2v1 situation coming through here. They are playing much better. The Jets are giving themselves a chance to win this game. Another shutdown goal. Guess who? Mr. Sparacco. Hold on just a minute here. Hopping in. Starbucks. Not sure what they were thinking there. Didn't quite have the vision to engage that. They're now in the middle. You need that. Go back to base. Who's all by some one them right now and just like that bf sword acquired cloak of agility acquired a chance to win this game acquired there's a sprinkle oh my gosh absolutely deleted the said juan is not gonna matter and here comes the rest of the team fight zyra can't provide enough there yo yo dog does resurrect the passive trying to find some damage on the edge you're not gonna do so from alti coming with the mf down it looks like the warriors might be able to finish the game Look at the CZ come through from orbit. Skoos Rat, the absolute beast of the top lane, continues the damage. Wow, look at that Q. They're gonna trap Trent in the base. Oh, Justin, or Jensen, excuse me. So much damage being put down even in the fountain. And they are going to find the Nexus and the win here in game number one. Bullet time coming through. Too little, too late. That is your game. Well, we said the Warriors were favored coming into this one, right? And you see just why they played so well together as a team. I mean, Scoos are at 13, 4, and 4. 12K gold acquired throughout the course of the game. Absolutely amazing stuff. You got to give a lot of respect to Jensen as well in the bot lane. 8, 3, and 6. The only player with more gold accrued throughout the course of the game than Scoos Rat. Those two dealt so, so much damage right now. I mean, just look at Skuzrat's build toward the end. You get that Death Stance. You get the Black Cleaver. You get the Sterex Gauge, right? All these things have some residual health bonus, right? Sterex Gauge does give you lifeline. Uh, the Death Stance gives you that insane amount of life steal, uh, especially more if you're melee. Black Cleaver, it just cleaves. You know, it doesn't give you a tankiness, but man, so, so great play coming out from Skuzrat. Looking for more in game number two of this best two out of three series. You gotta wonder if they are going to ban out that Aatrox or other pigs that Skuzrat traditionally will be playing. That's what I've got my eye on. On the other side, the Jets from Jackson. They need to figure something out there. I did like their picks and bans, right? I liked how they played. And I thought early on Starbucks was playing well. Starbucks was playing aggressive, which is the key for me. If you can attack and not react, you're going to be in a good situation, especially with this level of play. But we saw that disappear after about 10 minutes. You just can't be that aggressive when your lanes are losing. Uh, jungle diff is something that's talked about a lot, but I think jungle diff is often born out of lane differential, right? Starbucks was aggressive early on. Starbucks could not be aggressive later on because all of their lanes were losing. 
so you can't push up because the collapse is a certain death in a 2v1 even a 1v1 i uh, you know later in that game if the killer guy caught you on a one you're dead uh, if jinsen rotated up you're dead Stu's right rotated down you're dead so very tough position to be in for starbucks like to see if they will gank maybe a little bit more this game i mean if the issue is your lanes getting behind early what can you do but help out your laners other than that i did like the play or the ideas that mr bracco and trent together they didn't quite pull it off they were a little disappointing in team fights i think their best the best time they pulled it off was when the game was already over uh the nexus being siege they layered the alties they got the damage down looked great in concept looked great in theory they have to apply that earlier in the game uh, we did see trent go down and pull off a fantastic alti the team was not there to follow up there needs to be a greater level of communication coming out from the jets if they want to go toe to toe with the warriors in this game number two and try to force a third game in the series but right now it's all coming up warriors man midland looking so so strong put a lot of respect on orbit as well really got jensen going bot lane actually claimed first blood for this game not something you say often or at least all too often about supports but hey orbit played very very well i do like the build starting the gargoyle stone plate i think that gives you a lot of survivability i mean it's just a fantastic item in addition you saw the stopwatch used to save orbit's life during a bullet time you could add a functionality of the items that build into it if the components are doing things and you don't even have the first full item yet you are absolutely golden Whew. quick sip there but a relatively quick game there for middleton the warriors took it down in 24 minutes which uh hey good news if you're if you're trying to catch the later game it looks like we'll be on time for that given another result like this but we're going to see if the jackson jets can rally together pull it together here i'm looking at yo-yo dog especially just considering the top lane play coming through from scoos rat you gotta figure that that's where the focus is as i said in picks and bands uh you gotta do something you can't let that aatrox fall through and if that's the plan aatrox i'm terrified of the set i'm terrified of the orn uh fiora riven might be also champions that are definitely playmakers in the top lane that worry me so there's a large pool to ban from i think we're gonna find out whether or not they did their homework on scoozer i personally don't know scoozer at pool but that aatrox was insane absolutely insane we are just waiting here to get into the next game lobby has been started reach out real quick let's let's go midland favorite rat top laner <laughs> rat based rat based <laughs> absolutely uh who do you who's who's the mvp from game number one i mean it's it's gotta be man on the eight shocks that scoos rat is my takeaway from game number one chat let me know what you're thinking let me know what you're thinking for game number two who's gonna walk away with the win it's definitely hard to bet against midland after that amazing performance yo yo dog looks solid early game like i said starbucks was active early i like the aggression they just have to put it somewhere with their lane the lanes have to help out starbucks a little bit this is Sprocko and trent played aggressive in the bot lane i wanted to see them try for more engagement there it's tough against the brawn play orbit played so so well in that first game it's very tough when you're going up against someone of that stature of that flexibility that knowledge on a champion the brawn really stonewalled anything they were trying to do in the bot lane not only did that turn off the engagement from the zyra that really turned off mr sparacco because come late game the farm differential was big you weren't feeling the full effect that full damage from the bullet time that you would like the kind of damage that i noted early on what allows any team to win from just about any position uh mf ulti bullet time can just about win any team fight if placed correctly looking good right here we're just getting in the lobby gonna set up probably another pro draft here before we get into it just so everyone has all of the champions but very excited here for this game number two the rank disparity very in favor of the midland warriors coming to this one as i said they are the favorites so we're going to see the kind of mental game that the midland warriors uh, excuse me that the jackson jets have uh this is something that's talked about so so much mental game mental game mental game and you see it a lot more strong mental game shocker on the pro stage right uh a sweep i think statistically is the most common outcome 
of most collegiate esports. Losing that first game usually A means the other team might be a little better than you. They're a little bit prepared. But once the mental game is gone, forget about it. Forget about it. No team is winning. Not not no team, but 99% of the time you're not winning if your mental game is worse. Uh, if you start flaming your teammates, if you get toxic, it's going downhill. And it's going downhill absolutely quickly. We're going to see if they have the resilience. It has some of the heart to fight back. Maybe not even get the win, but just look a little bit better. Like I said, at the end of the game, you saw Trent and Mr. Sparocco pull off their ultimate combination. That's the kind of thing that you're going to need to see. They need to do that earlier. So that might be a sign, you know, at the end of the game, said, hey, uh, we got to try this. They got it off. They need to do that consistently. They need to do that earlier. So maybe that was them trying to build a little momentum going into game number two. We will see. As you said, just waiting for the spec link right here. Team's figuring out if they're on the right side of the map or not. If you're just joining us, this is our first series between the Jackson Jets and the Midland Warriors. Midland is up one game to none after a very dominant win in under 25 minutes. Later on tonight at 8 p.m., we're going to have the Ma the Randolph, excuse me, Randolph making Yellow Jackets going up against a familiar opponent for us on the stream, at least the Hood Blazers. We're going to see if Hood can figure it out and finally get that win that they've been looking for on stream. As I said, both teams just kind of figuring it out. Um, asking who's the imposter in chat. You know, I didn't realize. <laughs> didn't realize we weren't playing League of Legends here. Um, very excited. Talking about the picks and bans, technical side. Uh, outside of banning out the top laners with Skuzrat, the killer guy in the bot lane really, really put in so much work, but I think that might have been more of an extension of how well Tractor's played. I would think about taking the Brahmo in addition to the Aatrox and another top laner, and you just have to challenge the rest of the team. Beach. You have to look at, or excuse me, Jinx in the bot lane. You have to look at the killer guy and say, hey, beat us in the mid lane. Carry this team. We're going to ban out Skuzrat. We're going to take away the Braum. You have to be the person to do this. Uh, you look at you look, you look at Tractors. Same same thing. Uh, the Sejuani play was great setting people up, but can they force Tractors to have to be the best player on the team? Can they force the killer guy to have to be the best player on the team? Those are the questions that need to be answered with a yes if the Jets want to walk away with a win here in game number two because we know Skuzrat can carry the game. We know Jensen and Orbit as a unit can carry the game. Can the killer guy do it? Can Tractors do it? My initial feelings are probably yes, considering how well they played in the last game, but you don't know till you try. On the other side, you have to find who the bell cow will be. Who can carry this team? Yeah, who can carry this team? And if, if you're just joining us, if, if first time here, second time here, whatever it is, definitely drop a follow. We have so much content being dropped here as the spec link will come out for the pro draft so we're gonna get in here in just a second uh but so much esports content coming through here in the necc such a fantastic program such a fantastic vision we appreciate you tuning in we've got valorant we've got league of legends we've got rocket league and we have madden so a lot going on if you're a fan of esports this is the place you want to be to consume it at a collegiate level Spec link is up. Players signifying that they are ready. But as I was saying, Jackson's got to find that person that can carry them out of the slump. I'm looking at Starbucks. I think Starbucks had a lot of great aggressive plays. I'd love to see Starbucks on maybe a heavier carry jungle. Same thing could be said for Mr. Sparocco. Uh, we'll see, though. I'd love to see King Zeus Laura on maybe a control mage. Just Syndra, Oriana, something that can really be a playmaker and set up plays for them. Obviously, I'm not 100% aware of their champion pools. We are into picks and bans here. Malphite going off the board. Very smart decision. We'll be seen with a... Their Ajax going off the board. Very smart decision. Malphite, LeBlanc, and Thresh, the next to go. I do like the Malphite takeaway. Uh, just so, so strong. That ulti. Unstoppable force. I mean, if you're an ADC, it just feels so bad to be taken out of a fight. And you can't do anything about it. Uh, QSS doesn't stop knockup. So... There's really nothing that you can do. I mean, maybe, maybe you could build a Zanyas and try to hourglass it out. But at that point in time, everyone and their mom is lining up their skill shots on you. Akali taking off the board as well. So they take away two mid laners and only one top laner. Interested to see what they put Scoozer on this game as we are heading into our very first pick here for the Jets. I'm going to expect them to come out with their jungler early on. I really think that 
Starbucks is the person to carry this game for you. You have to get a priority jungler, and they will take the grave. So this is exactly what they do. Uh, they go priority jungler. They take a jungler that is a marksman, put out a lot of damage, and this opens up some interesting opportunities in the bot lane if they would like them. The thing I personally like the best with grave jungle is a Senna, a fasting Senna, because you still really have a lot of marksman damage. Then while Senna builds up, uh, and your support gets big. Right, whatever the fasting support is, I personally like the Tom Kench provides a lot in team fights, provides a lot against Zoe with that sleepy trouble bubble. As that is what's locked in, Kazix will be the second pick. So, oh, oh man, would not want to be a squishy character here for the Jets. Jackson gonna have a tough time. Do not get caught out in the jungle alone. Zoe and Kazix will make quick work of you there. Second pick for the Jets coming in here in just a second. They're, they're really, they're, they're, they're milking this one. Two, one, and they will pick the Lux up in the mid lane. This is a tricky matchup in my mind personally. Zoe going up against Lux. Lux can try to keep the range against Zoe, but just so squishy, right? If that Lux gets hit by one trouble bubble, Zoe probably has an easy kill. Alistar coming through this is what i'm talking about you want a playmaker you got you a playmaker on both sides set being locked in most likely going to be piloted by Scoozrat in the top lane as i said if Scoozrat's aatrox is that good what does the set look like what is in the bag on these other champions we're about to find out as we do move into our second round of bands and scion will be taken off the table obviously yo-yo dog scion enough of a threat for them to consider banning it and they do Jackson thinking about their second use of bands here, and probably Ezreal. It's got to go, right? Um, the Warriors have yet to select an ADC, and there is the Ezreal taken off the board. Just makes sense. MF will go as well. So using their knowledge from game one, they will ban out for game two. Both teams on the same boat for that one. Lucian, the last to go, the recently nerfed Lucian. So we're into our last four picks. How will they open up here? My bet is they'll pick their support first. Try to hold off for that ADC, but we'll see what happens as they will have counter pick priority here for whatever they choose to not pick. And they do lead with the ADC. There is the Jinx coming through. A lot of damage on this team. A lot of damage for Midland. The Warriors are not messing around. If they can stay alive long enough, they should be able to win just about every team fight. And what's encouraging about staying alive long enough is that set ulti coming through. That showstopper can really buy a lot of time with the displacement. Caitlyn. Being hovered, not confirmed yet. I do like the pick there. The Caitlyn is locked in. The Caitlyn ulti is going to do so, so much damage here to everybody but that set. So keep an eye on engages or just Caitlyn spamming that R as soon as it's up. I would not be surprised to see Mrs. Sparacco just absolutely spam that R, get opponents low, because at that point you're a threat. You're a threat, right? Uh, that ulti puts him to half health. You're a threat for most HPs. As Jax is selected. A big signal that they want to win this late game, or at least they want a security valve in the late game. Gives them a little bit more of a front line combining with that Alistar. Last pick will be on the Warriors support. I would not be surprised to see them come through with yet another Braum. Unbanned, still on the table. Would give them a little bit more front line with that set. But we'll see what the Warriors do decide. And they go with the Poppy. We have some flexibility here. Poppy can be sport. Poppy can be top. Second be sport. Second be top. Um, instantly, that Poppy does feel like it's going sport. Just as a hard counter to that Alistar. You know, Poppy can stop the movement abilities with, with the charge of their own. Excited to see that coming through. As it looks like players are ready to head into the real lobby. If you're just joining us, we do have the Jackson Jets taking on the Midland Warriors. Midland up one game to none right now in the series. A commanding win. If you missed it, I got good news for you. The VOD will be up tonight when we're all done. But we won't be all done until after 8 o'clock because we have match number 2 of the night. The Randolph making Yellow Jackets taking on the Hood Blazers. We're going to see if the Blazers can finally get that long awaited W on stream. But back to this draft for the time being. Let's go with the, a little bit of a deep dive here on their bands and what the thinking was. We're coming out first three bands 
for the Jets. We see the Aatrox to go Blanc. We see the Akali. Aatrox makes 100% absolute sound sense. Scoozrap was a world beater last game. Could not be stopped. Absolutely nuts. Just everywhere on the map all at once. Doing it under towers. Did not matter. That ban makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Moving down, we have two mid laners ban, then LeBlanc and Akali in their first rotation of banning. The Akali ban does make some amount of sense. The killer guy did have a solid game, but I really think you could focus a little bit more on the top lane, considering Scoozrat really was the one who won the game, was the real difference maker. We see the LeBlanc taken off as well. Same school of thought. Take away some dynamic champions from the killer guy in the mid lane. Didn't have the best game last game, but you know, maybe maybe didn't have the whole arm in the bag. Was just scooping stuff off the top. So we're going to see what the killer guy has in store for us in this game. First three bands coming out from the other side. The Warriors elect to ban Malphite, Thresh, and Jin. Jin must be a nice pocket pick, nice comfort pick for Mr. Sparocco. Otherwise, I personally don't see the reason to ban here. Thresh and Malphite are two massive, massive playmakers. This is a signal to me that they think they're more mechanically skilled. They think that they are the better team. And so they want to take away easy tools for the other side to fight with. They want to take away easy tools from the Jets. Because Malphite ulti, right? It's not the most skilled building in the world. You press R. You click on a group. Boom. You click on the ADC. Boom. You're doing your job. Threshes does have a high skill cap, but it's just... A massive playmaker and hooks are very frustrating to deal with, especially when you feel like you're in a good position, but maybe you forgot to sweep one ward and all of a sudden the whole team is gauged on top of you through a lantern. I, I like the bands. Ultimately, uh, I, I do believe the signals that they feel the better team mechanically. They're going to end the game earlier, which is what we saw in game number one and our second carousel of bands. We see Ezreal and Lucian going off the board to bot laners. Lucian did see some burn in the top and the mid lane of late, so most likely targeted at the bot lane there. They only have their ADC and support left to select, and I do not hope to be seeing Lucian support any time soon. I like the Ezreal ban. Ezreal was such a problem for you last game. Jensen really put in so much work, and it's hard to get on top of Ezreal, right? You Chrono Shift or another, boom. You spam that E, Get out of there. You have so much impact from a range with the ulti. Just how the skill shots work at being a skill shot dependent champion. There's not much you can do to counter it as well. As you said, skill shot dependent champion. If Jin's is hitting the shots, that's it. That's all you can do. On the other side in our second round of bands, we do see the Scion and the MF coming through. Both champs that we saw applied last game by Yo-Yo Dog and Mr. Sparaco, respectively. They must have not particularly liked what they've seen or their scouting knowledge doesn't go extremely deep, so they just want to ban what they know, and that's exactly what they did this time around. I definitely like the Scion ban, and once again, the misfortune meant to me is indicative of, hey, we think we're the better team here. Let's eliminate any random chance that we have to lose off one bad team fight at the end of the game where, you know what, bullet time got placed just right over some CC, uh, and, and you just randomly lose. Uh, they're obviously playing around that in my mind. Now let's go over the teams top to bottom in the top lane. You're going to have Scoozrat on that set. Aatrox piloted so expertly by Scoozrat earlier tonight. Expecting nothing short of greatness from Scoozrat here in game number two. Going to be very tough to deal with, especially in the early to mid game. That Jax doesn't do much. You get online there in the late game. Moving down the list, we got Kazix being piloted by Tractors. Tractors. Solid game last game, set up the team a lot, playing a different, very, very different champion now. Excuse me. Uh, the Sejuani can really set up teammates. Kazix, you gotta get picks. You gotta be looking for you. you. Gotta be this apex predator in the jungle. Excited to see how that translates into invades, into jungle aggression going up against that Graves. The mid lane will be Zoe, the killer guy. Once again, a champion looking to get a lot of picks, trying to find the trouble bubble. I really enjoy the mid lane 2v2. If they can eliminate the Graves, if they can eliminate the Lux with their pick potential, it should be an easy fight for them. Bot lane rounded out by Jinx and Poppy. Poppy, a non-traditional support pick slotted in against Hyper Mobile support champions such as Alistar. So a very obvious counter coming through from Orbit. Jensen, what can you say about Jinx? 
gets big late game, is very item dependent, but very dynamic with that super mega death rocket. We're going to see if we see any spicy plays coming through on the other side. Coming out for the Jets, we've got Yo-Yo Dog in the top lane playing Jax. If they can stick around in this game long enough, Yo-Yo Dog will be able to carry with Jax in the top lane. It just happens. You just lose to Jax in the late game. Uh, moving down, you got Graves, and I really like this pick. I said Starbucks was my player that I thought could carry this team. They put him on a marksman, right? Uh, essential marksman. The Graves kind of sits in this weird spot, but they put him on a character that can do a lot of damage, very dynamic, has mobility, has the damage. You just have to keep the Graves alive long enough. They're going to do something with it. Moving down the line, King Zushlar playing Lux in the mid lane. I wanted a control mage. I did get my wish on the CC and... Like I said, Syndra or Yana would have been ideal for me. Lux is great more for picks so you're not going to find that that massive massive amount of cc on the whole team like you will with the oriana alt but it's there it does have a decent amount of damage it does allow you to play from a range allow jacks graves i'll start to get up there and do the work where lux and Caitlyn are in the back line i am impressed with the range and the poke of this composition we'll see how it comes through speaking of poke in the bot lane we've got mrs franco playing Caitlyn. i like this pick a lot once again sit back take pot shots Notice how squishy the damage dealers are on the enemy team, right? You can alt at will the ADC, the jungle, the mid lane. Uh, I fully expect this Caitlyn just to be spamming R. Duct tape down that R button. If it's up, I want to get this where I finish off. But love to see this break out play very aggressive. Play with some reckless abandon in this game. Let's get going. Rounding out the squad here for the Jets as we load into game here will be Trent on that Alistar. See what they can do there. Big playmaker, and they are going to need a trailing one game to zero here in the series. If you're just joining us, first of all, smash that follow button. Second of all, we've got the Jackson Jets trailing one game to none against the Midland Warriors. The Jets are coming out on the blue side midland warriors coming out on the red side we'll see if any action happens early on looks like both teams are just going to settle for a five point little bit of vision gain there by tractor who's once again going to be leashing on the top side we starting top side let's see it back here scoos gotta feel good coming to this game after the poor performance they put on display in game number one absolutely flex there dominance everywhere killer guy going to avoid some damage there king zushlar looking for a little bit of cheese early on and we've seen prestige skins both matches here these these are some high rollers these are not your everyday league of legend players we are going to see chat sand orbit orbit and chat sand rep planner mvp <laughs> i gotta agree excuse that gotta be the mvp after game number one Puts themselves in a position to be the MVP for game number two. Once again, on such a dynamic champion. Jets have their work cut out for them here in game number two. Buffs have on both junglers starting the bot side. Will be working bot to top. Interesting to see, just given how squishy the mid laners are, if there will be any early ganks trying to get one or the other. Both can get picks at such a high level because it's going to finish off that blue buff in the bot side. We're going to see what happens. I also like to know that the losing team there, the Jets, did elect to the blue side here. And if you know you're taking Graves coming in, getting Graves started on that I feels so much more significant than starting Graves on blue. I like it. Going to forget about the rest of the bot side angle and go for a pretty fast clear here right to the Wolves. Ooh, Orbit didn't get headbutted there. Going nowhere. Stun coming through. Scoos Red does use the Faith Breaker. Top lane matchup, very intriguing here. As I said, they get the advantage of the set early on. That Jax will get matched in the late game, however. And yeah, this is exactly what I expect. Scoos Rat just forcing Yo Yo Dog off of Wave. Jensen getting in a little bit of damage there. He's gonna start hitting this tower already. Alrighty, the early aggression coming through from the Warriors. Trading a little bit of damage here in the bot lane. Over it and Jensen really gonna lose out on that train. Over it scooping up that shield. We're going to keep it here in the ball and Mrs. Brackle looking for the opening. Don't expect a whole lot of early action here. Uh, you don't really want to go with that star until you're level 3. You got the full set of CC abilities. Face breaker coming through. Yo-Yo Dog got to be very careful. You have to respect the space of Scoot Stun. 
coming through. Action in the jungle. Two separate 1v1s happening here. Red buff. Double buffs or Starbucks? I don't know if Tracker's gonna be this fight. Starbucks autoing. Tick, tick, tick. Oh, flash over the wall. First blood. Woo. Jax responding to the bot lane as well, but it's not gonna matter. Starbucks does win the 1v1 in the jungle. Big star for them. Jets need some more of that early on. Losing on the bot lane. Oh, knockup coming through. Orbit, gotta be careful, but so does Trent. Does get the CC down. Guardian will be popped onto Orbit there. Or no, it's Aftershock popping into Orbit. As Yo-Yo Dog flashing over the wall, it's not gonna matter. Does waste the flash, will die. Starbucks trying to clean up his fight against Scooz Rat. Still has the double buff. Scooz Rat. <gasps> Slip and slide comes through. Starbucks picks it up. Mr. Spreco got to run. Trent does get the CC down. Jensen not going to be able to pick it up. Good flash going through on Mr. Spreco. Woo. Hot and heavy early on here. Two kills to one. Both picked up by my selection to carry. Mr. Star. One kill picked up by the set on the other side. Scooz Rat, the MVP from last game. First dragon is up in 47 seconds here. So I assume we're going to see both junglers make an attempt at least. Tractor's only level three after losing that early engage. Starting 0-1 is matched on farm though, but tough to come back from those two kills. The smite's going to be a level higher for Starbucks here if they can maintain this level advantage going into the next drag. Yo, yo, dog. Going to be pushed off way here. Scooz Rush is so powerful. Set just so powerful early on. It's going to be tough for the Jacks to do much until they get some items under the belt. Yeah, Scooz. Hey, I'm, I'm coming. Yeah. Base Breaker, not going to find its intended target. Comes up a little short. Yo, yo, dog coming through. Hopping in. Haymaker. Bit of damage. Yo, yo, dog. Half health already. Scooz Rat, king of the top lane right now. Dragon is up as we speak. Neither team really in a position to try to do anything. But keep your eyes on Starbucks in the bottom side of the map. Like looking for a play that ultimately ends. And them getting Dragon there. We'll find the key there. The killer guy gets some damage in. So this is a very, very nail biter of a matchup in the lane. Both have both mages have so much burst potential here. Oh, coming through. And there's the reason for the counter. Orbit pushing back. But here comes Starbucks. We'll get caught up in the trap. It's not gonna matter. The root coming through. Great trap placement. Starbucks scoops up yet another kill. Three. No, but Jint's gonna get one on the crack back. Scooping up Trent in the process. They do end up trading support. 3-0 and 0 for Starbucks right now is making a world of difference in this game. Trying to secure some vision around Dragon Pit. Trying to set up for this. Tractors collapsing in. The killer guy just has a trouble bubble. And they too going to go down here. Starbucks stands no chance. Shut down. Old being given to the zone. A bit of a scrap in the top lane. There's a showstopper. Yo-yo. Dog! It's Haymaker. Six feet. Tractors and the killer guy get right on this objective and in the blink of an eye It looks like it might be the game, but all of a sudden the Warriors storm back in it Can there be some kind of attempt to steal this from the bot side? Is that coming through? Oh! oh my goodness! King Zoslar steals it right from under their noses 911 I'd like to report a robbery Wow, King Zushar with a play that cannot be understated. They lost so much priority on that drag, but they can still pick up the Infernal. Scooz Rat duking out in the top lane with Yo-Yo Dog. Yo-Yo Dog's got to be careful. You cannot disrespect early on. Scooz Rat going for the die, getting some damage. In. Will take some tower shots, however. Yo-Yo Dog got to be happy with that trade. Just you, you, you can't get face breaker here. You get face breaker you're dead. And the face breaker narrowly misses their Yo-Yo Dog playing with fire, but. Is in wave now. Level 7. Well, wait, doesn't matter too much. Haymaker coming through. Yo, yo, dog will go down. Here comes Trent in the bot lane trying to find some CC. Will get the stun down onto Jensen. Can they find the damage? Mr. Spareko. Just got to get a few more autos. They turn around. Sprinkle going low. The trap is up. Can they find the damage? Starbucks does over the wall with the ulti. Next on the chopping block. It's Orbit. Knock up coming through. Nowhere to go. Double kill. Five and one is Starbucks. Oh, looking like a venti order right now. Just a tall glass of hot coffee coming through. Not much can be done. Who's right? Continues to push in the top lane here. Might be able to get this tower, but Yo Yo Dog running back up to respond. Great play from Sparake Trent here in the bot lane, setting up some plays. I said it 
and the intermission between games here. Absolutely vital these two get on the same page earlier in the game, and they have done exactly that early on. Looking great here early on. Outside of the top, Scoozrat looking just as dominant here in game number two as they did in game number one. But the Jets overall in a much better position than they were at this point in the last game. Trouble Bubble not going to come through. Starbucks chaining together some camps here, trying to be as efficient as possible. Rift Herald is on the table right now. Feels like we're just going to take a step back here. Everyone in the game, you know, uh, they're just going to let this game breathe a little bit. We've had a lot of nonstop action. 10 kills combined at 8 minutes and 40 seconds. Sometimes you just got to, as a player, you got to take that deep breath. Let the game calm down a little bit. But as I say that, it looks like a cheeky play here in the mid lane. Starbucks trying to find something. And Tractors is in the vicinity. We're going to see a bit of this coolie to potential. Both junglers are going to rotate out. That Rift Herald still in full being pinged by trackers right now. Scoot. Scuzzrat. Still looking for kills. Yo Yo Dog gonna take a lot of damage. Scuzzrat going to get out and rotate potentially over, but this is gonna be uncontested for trackers. No one in the vicinity, nobody even in the same area code as this Rift Herald looking pretty free for them. This is one way that they get right back to the lead they had last game at this point. Starting neutral objective, Scuzzrat. Oh. Might be able to find a kill here, but not going to be able to run down the Jacks in time. Is able to back off, but does claim first tower gold, propelling the gold lead further just a little north of 2k right now. Fuchlar hits the stun, pops up with the ulti, but there's the trouble bubble. The killer guy, a lot of damage. Barrier coming through there. Scooge right. Oh, good hop by Yo-Yo Dog. Gets the jump off, avoiding the CC. And here comes Starbucks. Popping through damage dealt. Can they find the kill? Oh, showstopper! Scuzzrat does get a kill in the 1v2 situation. Starbucks popping the vision. Trying to find out Scuzzrat. Scuzzrat 1v2s! Tractors comes in to scoop it up, but would have got the kill regardless. Trent here in the bot lane. Finds the stun on the Jensen. Does get trapped there. Oh, coming through. There's the root. The all team gets interrupted. Massive play. Orbit. Saving the life of their ADC, but going to die because of it. Most likely Flash coming through. Trent does steal the kill away from the ADC. Mrs. Frackle probably not super happy with them, but just that they did get the kill. Big play by Orbit, saving Jensen's life there. Whew. Yo, yo, dog. You still got to play with fire. It's every time you walk out a little bit. Oh, there's the Haymaker. Look how much damage that did. You got to be very, very careful. You do know that the ulti isn't up. It was just you, but one, one Facebreaker and you're dead here. Yeah, not going to find it, but Facebreaker and a Haymaker combo is going to be Scuzzrat's going to be able to finish down this tower. Not even going to matter. Had an opportunity there to go for the kill. I'm not even going to lie. There was no opportunity to get in there and to drop the Haymaker. Mrs. Fracco going to start pushing in the spot tower. Actually, just going to get some damage on Jensen here. These two do now. Mrs. Fracco to get flash on Jensen. One more auto is going to find the kill. On the back, Starbucks running through Diet Tower. That will be another kill. Trent, this cow getting big. Two, one, and three. That's a whole lot of beef on the rip from that Alistar. We'll see if the playmaking does follow up. He does get increased with the items. Dragon number two on the table. Tractors orbit rotating over. Here is trying to get onto this pit. Got to be careful with your Starbucks. Oh, sliding through. Goes so very low. Do they have another skill in them? Haymaker nearly picks it up. Oh my goodness. Oh, they don't quite get it. The Lux ulti was on target, but the smite does come for track and they do scoop up that neutral objective, tying it at one drag A piece. Starbucks does pick up that red buff on the back end. Eight kills to seven. The Warriors from Midland still holding a lead in this game, but it's a much, much closer one than we anticipated after seeing game one. The Jets have come to play, especially Starbucks, who I, I pegged as the person that needed to carry this game if they wanted a shot. And look who is five, two, and one right now. Having all but two of the kills for their team. I've liked to play Tretch a lot this game, though. Uh, does have two of the kills. Maybe poached them a little bit from ADC. Stolen those away. But regardless, they're getting it done in the bot lane. Rift Herald will be summoned mid here. 
probably going to require a response from the team unless they want to lose their mid tower. They've already two tower stops, so they're losing a lot of pressure across the map. Starbucks moving in, not going to care too much about trackers. Going for the vision. Here is an ulti in the bot lane. Alistar getting tossed around like a rag doll. Mr. Sporacco not going to do much on the back end. The Scuzzard does go a little bit low, but I don't think they'll find any further damage here. Yo Yo Dog looking for a kill. Flash expended. There's the stun. Trouble bubble drip. Lux off. Find some damage out of the killer guy. They need to find a little bit more. Cause it's, oh, there's a flash coming through. Shut down gold. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, a big dive. Sparacco going down to the face breaker. Scuzzrat scooping up a kill there. Now at six, one and one. Six kills from Starbucks. Well, rotating down, trying to find something. You don't want to fight Scuzzrat. Don't get too close. Ooh, face breaker not going to find the target. Otherwise, that would have been one dead graves. Orbit still sticking around. Yo, yo, dog jumping in. Scuzz rat. Gotta be careful. Whoa! Nearly escapes that haymaker. Whoa! My goodness. Scuzz rat doesn't know there is a ward in that bush. Just trying to keep on pushing the waves. Jensen might be cut out here. Flash coming through. King Zuslar. Caitlyn Alti. Not gonna be enough, but yo, yo, dog does pick up their first kill of the game. Scuzz rat. Trying to duke it out one-on-one -on -one with Trent under the tower there. Not a whole lot can be done with Trent here. A one-on-one. -on -one. Graves is responding. So here comes Starbucks. This is an opportunity to get some shutdown gold. 700 gold on the head of Scuzzrat. This is a massive bag. If they can claim it, it looks like they will be able to do just that. Starbucks going low. A little more CC required. They do get the shutdown gold. Going so low. Point the trouble bubble. Starbucks does. Can they find the kill into the Zoe headbutt coming through? No further pursuit. Starbucks, the micro play. The knockup coming through. Jinx, not going to find a target. Here comes Racco, the killer guy. May have been off a little more they can chew, but they're not going to get punished. Just yet for sticking around this long. Sporacco does not have Ace in the hole available right now. Did just use it to secure that kill on the top side of the map. The killer guy not going to find anything here. Graves gets out a okay, but more importantly, claims the 700G bounty that was on the head. What's up? coming through. Actually, gonna hit Jensen. Not gonna be enough to save the tower. I don't believe. Yeah, one more auto. Blue tower will go down the mid lane. So. Good play by Jensen to recognize, hey, no one is mid. I can able to scoop this up. And the same happening there in top from Yo-Yo Dog using the time. Ice! Yep, and there falls the tower. Scuzzer, maybe we'll let Shvanko in the back in here. Good hop out by the Jax Killer guy. Trying to find some damage. Only gets the proc from the Ludens Echo. Mr. Sprackle does have some damage of their own. Gotta be careful around there. Did you see three on the top side? They have their eyes on this next Rift Herald. Great way to generate some more pressure. Of which they already have plenty. Two towers taken in the top lane. One tower taken in the mid lane. Looks like they're able to do it uncontested. Uh... Starbucks is going to have to steal this. Does not have priority, obviously, on the pit. Three members of the enemy team there can find something. Lux Alti is up in two seconds. They're trying to find a steal. King Zushar does not have another trick up their sleeves, and they will not get it to go. Sporacco still going one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, killer guy. Drops the exhaust, but here comes the beef. Oh, getting right through. Nearly some freaking footwork from Zoe that led to a kill, but Sporacco will stay alive. Trent coming through to save the ADC. A lot of great teamwork this game. We're all knotted up at 10 kills apiece. Ooh, Trent trying to find something here. Does get the knockup. Starbucks playing through the wall. Alties coming through. Starbucks picks up yet another kill. Eight, two, and one. The 110 CS to boot. Scuzzrat coming through. There's the root coming from Lux. King Zushlar there to protect Yo-Yo Dog going back in. They want a little bit more. Showstopper not going to mind the damage on the Lux. There's a big root though. Zushlar coming up massive in this fight, but probably going to pay for it with their life barrier. Not going to be enough. There's the Haymaker. Double kick. Now on the Dragon. Starbucks doing all they can to keep their team in this game. Staying on the dragon. Trent going to go down. The smite will come through. They get out the back end of the pit. Starbucks coming up absolutely massive. But Scuzzrat in the bot lane. Picks up the tower. Going very low. Taking some tower shots there. Dealing with a lot of wave. Aggro. Good start for Midland. The Warriors are definitely in the driver's seat. But you got to put a lot of respect for the Jits right here. Starbucks putting on one heck of of a performance they are not going down without a fight after losing game one in very convincing fashion
in the break we talked about the mental game and how it's very common collegiately to see sweeps more than any other outcome uh, because the mental fortitude just isn't there they don't have the same level of experience well not with these jets they have come to play they have brought everything they've got and we're gonna see if it's enough here down the stretch killer guy does have the redemption available trying to find a play under tower here mrs breck okay. just gonna auto the tower a bit get a decent amount of damage down drop the q not gonna find anything there Starbucks playing wards on the back side of pit. Looks like they're setting up a play here, Mr. Spreckle. They're orchestrating a tower dive. The tower is very low. Scuzzrat going to proxy farm to try to set this up further. But they're rotating back. Here's Starbucks. They do see Starbucks. And here comes the Alistar. Beef coming through. There's the knockup. They need a lot more CC than that. Redemption is pop. Orbit rotating down. Oh, flash through. Starbucks flashing away from the support. Probably wisely. Orbit giving suit. Actually doing some damage there. Show stop for coming through. Oh my goodness. What a haze maker. Scuzzrat. Sporaco. Gotta run to tower. Playing the worst imaginable game of chin between a buzzsaw and a bazooka. And you're gonna lose either way. That time dies under tower. King Zushlar does get the CC out. Does get the follow-up damage. But it's not nearly enough. Scuzzrat just so big right now. And there the pressure in the bot lane they do summon the rip tail bot lane as well this is going to demand immediate response yo yo dog is backing in the top lane they're going to kill the tower in time they're picking another charge off of this shelly and all of a sudden it was neck and neck for a while but they just absolutely exploded here in the last minute trouble bubble not going to find anything the charge coming through there's the tower poppy ulti not gonna find any targets they're going in here there's the caitlin out yo yo dog you going so low they need it for the cc but it's gonna fall the charge coming through starbucks low as well they have to escape this fight with some members alive if they don't want to lose the game on the spot. The killer guy trying to find some damage in this fountain. It's not going to happen, but Shelly eventually goes down the rotating top side to get this next inhibitor. Ooh, Lux all getting some damage down. It's hard to get close. Lots of damage yours up. Orbit is there to peel, but here's Starbucks leading the chase. Does drop the smoke. Going to do nothing more. Scuzzrat and Tractor sticking around, however. So hard to engage, as we said, on to Scuzzrat right now. You don't really want to walk towards. I mean, that face breaker is absolutely brutal. Tractor's still there. Starbucks got to be careful. 1v3 situation potentially. Face breaker does come through. Is able to get out. Yo-Yo Dog. Don't get too aggressive there. And there's this coming through. Orbit doing so much. Sliding through the wall there. Starbucks. Oh, what a cheeks rocket. Sparacco goes down as well. Zooslar next on the menu. Thank you very much. I think I'll have some beef for dessert. Trent going down last yo yo dog the only one remaining as the base has started to be siege scuzzrat taking two shots there but they have the supers coming in bot lane and they have killer guy pushing in mid lane with a full wave to boot not a caddy one but it's not going to matter most likely killer guy low on mana doesn't matter for the auto attacks continues to push in continuing to apply pressure the warriors have played a great game here in the past couple of minutes really figuring things out it was neck and neck starbucks giving all they got but they are pulling away in this game right now the saving grace in my mind for the jets is if they can somehow finagle this dragon soul we saw one steal already game through from king zushla if that can be repeated two more times while keeping some kind of base integrity keeping some of your towers up you have to defend that mid tower if all of your inhibitors go down all your this game is nearly lost the jets need to find somebody to get this drag soul they need to not do this yo dog oh that's actually escape the face right there orbit coming through we'll be able to get some cc down there's the knock up oh yo dog oh jinx rocket will miss it's not going to matter most likely up there's the showstopper yo yo dog going to go down there scuzz legendary 14 and 2 what a stat line for assists to boot this next dragon is up one second they're on it they're going to have to trade it for baron it looks like absolutely is there continuing here to get the siege on dragon they might be able to, not be able to spawn fast enough at all uh to the top side this baron will go down with ease as we said, Monster here, this guy's around 14. Only two deaths. 700 gold on their head. 700. Uh, we were brewing this rivalry up, building this up between Starbucks and Scuzzcraft, but man. 
Scuzzrat running away with it. Our MVP from last game looking like a repeat performance atop the podium here in game number two in this best of three. Ooh. You okay, want we'll just run under tower. There's the haymaker. Not going to do too much. Starbucks is still very big here. You got to put some respect on the name. Oh, my gosh. Or we just absolutely delete him like a stick of butter in the furnace. Now you see me. Now you don't. Double kill. Respond from Yo-Yo Dog. It's going to be too little. Too late. You can't for CPR. The corpse is already six feet deep. Zushlar. All thing through. That's not going to matter either. Oh, Jensen going low. Look at the rockets coming through. The damage. Smargarako picks it up with the Nexus under siege. Look at the damage. Harvesting souls. Winning game. 15 kills from Scuzzrat in a clean sweep here in game number two. The Midland Warriors will be your winners in our first match of the night. The heroics from Starbucks could not quite get it done. Zuschler also putting in a big drag steal. Zero kills. That donut's going to hurt from your mid laner. Looked good early on. It looked like they had a puncher's chance, but similar result. I think last game went to 21 and a half minutes, 23 and 43 seconds here. Tough, tough outing for the Jets from Jackson. Meanwhile, the Midland Warriors have a lot to be happy about. Very exciting win for them. A bit of a rout. Scuzzrat has got to be our MVP for the match in that clean sweep. Beautiful second game. 15, 2, and 6, as we said, across the board, great gameplay. Uh, we love seeing Jensen come out. Orbit, off meta support pick, specific to counter Trent. Love the play of the Poppy as well. That's our first series for the night all wrapped up. We've got Randolph making Yellow Jackets going up against the Hood Blazers in a little bit. But we're going to take a quick step aside. Beautiful chance to go to the bathroom because that was some riveting gameplay. I know you're on the edge of your seat. Beautiful chance to refill up on the snacks and drinks. A beautiful chance to hit that follow button on the Twitch chat. But whatever you do, be back, because we will be back in a couple of minutes here with the Randolph making the old Jackets going up against the Hood Blazers. See you then. Then fly to home But if you wanna travel Then go alone Yeah, what's the point in us If I never know Yeah, if you're gonna leave I'ma let you go I'm tired of the pain Go
wish I had my bad days But it doesn't mean I lost my style where were you When my heart was on the ground I thought time would prove That you would stick around I guess time starts up A king without his crown Now I'm breaking and you're faking, girl You never made a sound There's not a single day that passes without you on my mind. Not even one minute can end up before you come around. I yearn for the days when I see your face here before me. I long for the time to hold me in your arms. How I wish that you were here to give me everything I want. But I know that life's unfair and we can't always have it. In my head there's a wall I can't control That's where my demons get And it's taken me years Now it was clear My shadow is my only twin And the ones that love me the most And the ones that
And welcome back to our coverage of the NECC. If you're just joining us, the Jackson Jets got swept by the Midland Warriors. But we are here in our second match of the night. The Randolph making Yellow Jackets going up against the Hood Blazers. Now, we've seen this Hood team on the stream a few times. And every time, we said they have a lot to look at in the bottom view. And the mid lane needs a little bit of help. Uh, Sherito needs a little bit of help there in the mid lane. And I'm expecting a Sharito Ari lock. That's that's what we've come to expect here. Echo is first picked in there. Haven't seen a whole lot of Echo played in this conference as we do have a lever. Coach Danny leaving the lobby. Uh, we'll see what, what comes to that. Probably just a disconnect here. Yeah. Um, happens all the time. Thank you for staying patient with us. <laughs> Chat giving him a hard time saying he dodged. Uh, typical rules for that will be you run back the same exact picks and bands. So we will see the echo locked in. We will see the set locked in uh, with the same three bands on both sides. 
this this is going to be an interesting matchup. As you said, um, looking for their first win on stream are the Hood Blazers. They have had a rough, tough go of it early on in the NECC season. Should have the same picks and bands here, so no new information to digest. There is the NAR. But let's start with these first two picks. We have the set coming through. I really think they're gonna already second pick. I, just something in my gut, something in my soul, deep down in there. Uh, underneath all the everything else, yeah, it might just be heartburn. But I'm feeling some kind of way that they're going to pick Ari. Sharito really, really loves the pick. Uh, we, we've seen it time and time again. It's what I'm fully expecting. But we will see. Hey, side note, I love the Tracer mug. But uh, if Riot has League of Legends mugs out there and you know about them in chat, first of all, Drop, I don't know if you can drop links. If you can't drop links, DM me on Twitter. Because I would love to jazz it up a little bit. Second of all, hit the follow button. Because if you're in chat and you haven't followed, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? You know the content's A1. As you can see set, and we do see Grumps lock in the Warwick. So, Ari's still on the table. Zaki's locking. Look at the beef in this matchup. We got some some thick lads running out. Trinomir, Zach, Set, Whoa, 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 whoa. Akali, Sharito. What happened? Sharito went to the VOD and is running it back with something new. I like it. A little bit of fresh blood in the champion pool. Blitzcrank taken off the board. I'm just excited for this one. As we said, we got Macon on the left-hand side. They are the Yellow Jackets. Excuse me. The Hood Blazers on the right-hand side for the red team. Who excited to get into this one? Is this the week for Hood? They've been searching for that win everywhere, but they just can't quite find it. Talon banned as is a... No, no not the, the Ari. So the Ari will go in case that Akali could get sent to the top lane. Morgana is locked in. We saw Bronco play Morgana once last week as well, I do believe. Maokai, th these teams are so tanky. These front lines are just going to be massive. Especially that Morgana spell shield. We'll see what ADC gets locked in here. Who's the support? Is this a... I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> I really am at a loss for words here. Pretty standard stuff coming out from the side of Hood, but Macon, Randolph Macon, what do you make of this team composition? Everyone, everyone put their thinking caps on me right now. We're going we're gonna to go on the tank a little bit. My, my best bet is Maokai support. I would like to say Zach support, right? These these are the two options I see in my mind. Zach support, Maokai top, Trinomir jungle. Trinomir jungle is just not good. Uh, it used to be Warlords Thirst, Blood Chiefs Thirst, Warlords, I don't know. There used to be that mastery. You could lifesteal, I believe, off of jungle camps, and Trinomir was just, you know, that was it in the jungle. So good. Not that anymore. That's the one thing I can see. The second option, Maokai support, Zach jungle, Trinomir top. But either way, there is some funky stuff going on here, which is why I like that they picked the Ezreal because it's such a safe ADC. If the rest of your team isn't popping off, they're not clicking, guess what? Ezreal still has an escape. There's not a lot of people with Ezreal either. That's what's concerning. You don't have a traditional support. We'll see what happens. But once again, Fizz as well does have escape mechanism. So they have built this tanky front line. They're relying so much on Latleth and Trippy here to put in the work on the damage end and we're going to see if it pays off very interesting composition keep, keep, keep your eyes on this team keep your eyes on this team for making i don't know what they're cooking up down there but it sure smells interesting i'm not gonna say good yet but it smells interesting um on the other side coming through some familiar faces we know slinks we know grumps we know Sharito, broncliffe and rainbow madness rainbow madness has had some good moments on the big stage here I love the set pick for Slink. I think they can really put some work in. Slink has been a dynamic player as well. Uh, we've seen this hood team get swept multiple times, but there, there's been some solid individual performances. Um, I love the set Warwick. You have these two bruisers. They have high health bars. They have some sustain. They can both engage. So sometimes you run into the to the issue, and I think you might see that coming out here from the Yellow Jackets, that, yeah, you have this front line, but there's nothing stopping uh, the enemy's frontline from getting on your back line. Your front line needs some way to stay in there. The set in the war can do that. Can they buy enough time for this Akali, Morgana, and Caitlyn to do work? I think so. Morgana plus Akali 
is a nuts combo. I mean, Black Shield on any assassin, so good. I'm excited to see. Like, it feels like they're putting a decent amount of their eggs into the basket that is Sharito. Someone that they have needed bigger performances from. They're putting it in. I love this. I love this move. I mean, this, this is a storyline we're so much more invested than anyone else because we've seen them a lot. But can Sharito come up big? With Brock Lesnar supporting, I'm very excited to see Rainbow Madness back on the Caitlyn. A lot of range, a lot of damage. CC coming through from the ADC. I love the draft from the Blazers. A lot more traditional, a lot easier to execute. And I think that's something that's very important at this level of collegiate play, right? Who does yet to pick up that first W? Don't put together the most complex, best composition. What is easy? Set all thing. Throwing, throwing some tank onto the back line. That's easy. Uh, easier, at least, than a lot of things to do. This Akali from Shirito is, is, is exciting. There's a lot of moving pieces coming out from the other side. Blazers have a much easier composition to execute. We will see how that happens. This Maokai support, Zach Jungle, Trinimir Top is what it looks like right now. Chat, how are we feeling? We've got a Go Coach Danny in chat. Uh, no, no, that's not, that's exciting. That's exciting, Coach Danny on the Zach. We're, we're going to see how that pans out. Uh, I think the Zach on that side does hold a lot of the keys to the car, uh, as to speak. Um, that engage of elastic slingshot, first of all, can be done from such a massive range. Second of all, it's a great knockup, right? This opposite to pop is all confirmed. Okay, will be support Blue Party Zach in the jungle, Trinomere in the top lane. Grab me a sip of water here, real quick. I'm just saying, everybody knows that League of Legends is pay to win. Let's be honest. The skins matter. They're not just aesthetic, all right? And if it's uh, if it's pay to win right now, making running out with three skins versus only two, only one coming out from Hood. I mean, Hood. If, if you want to win games, the obvious solution is open up your wallets. <laughs> no, no, we're just we're just messing around here, having some fun in the booth. But yeah, very excited to see how this pans out. Awkward positioning, awkward posturing, I think, coming out from making here. The Yellow Jackets have their work cut out for them with this big, heavy front line. We're going to see if it does pay off. It's definitely a risk, but one that could return dividends. We're, we're, we're definitely going to see. I, I like Slink on the set. We've talked about it a little bit before. Slink has been a very dynamic player, has opened up some opportunities for this Hood team to be successful. They just have never quite had the rest of the team to follow up. Same with Broncliffe and Randall Madness. I think individually, a lot of these players have had moments. They've shown that they have a lot of skill. Can they put it all together? Solo Q and Fives are just different beasts all together. I mean, anyone who's ever played Clash can tell you that. Winning with your friends a lot harder because they're going to flame you. But B, because you're playing against another group of five coordinated players. The coordination, the teamwork, the synergy, so, so big in esports in general, but especially in League of Legends. I think it's most equitable traditional sports-wise to basketball, right? you got five players, five distinct positions, and if everyone's not doing their job, it's going to be very tough to win. You know what? Sure, you can win if one player has a stellar, stellar game. You know, really play hero ball, James Harden esque. Um, but like, 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 like we see in the finals, the Lakers solid round getting it done. We are finally in game here on the red side. We do have the fan favorites looking for the first win. The Blazers hailing from Hood and on the blue side running it out on the first time on stream plus the Randolph making yellow jackets who will prevail here very excited to see we're going to see some level one action and why not you've got broncliffe on this morgana starting the binding most likely slink running it through do we have the face breaker oh there it is brian t and jump oh wide right there on the on the binding not quite going to connect they will get some vision they do uh, they don't get the flash uh brian t does not flash just walks out very different story if Broncos can land that CC, but alas, they cannot. Looks like they're going to start in the bot side. Zach does get some vision there. Coach Danny, very nice ward placement. 
getting uh, vision, excuse me, of the jungle this early on is going to let you know so much about the pathing. It's going to give you information uh, whether or not you're being counter jungled. Your buffs are there to take. I love this play. You're going to see. Uh, well, I think we are going to see whether or not that ward is just something that they see LCS players. Like, it's, it's the right play. The next level is really understanding how that affects pathing. What times do you see the Warwick there? Warwick does have a pretty fast clear time. Sharito coming out with the aggression. Sharito's trying to throw hands, not holding anything back today. We're going to see if it pays off for Hood. As we said, they are still searching for the win on stream. They've been on the big stage a few times. This could be the week. And Sharito laid on the damage. Trippy. Gonna be taking advantage of there in the mid lane quite a bit. You gotta like what you're seeing from Sharito right now. The real question for Sharito has been the farm. Can Sharito keep up with the CS per minute? We are about to find out. This game's still very, very young, but Hood with a 100 gold lead. You'll take what you can get at this point. Coach Danny going pretty low here. We'll get the clear down. Slink down a level in top lane up against Jumbo Muffin. Jumbo Muffin. What a name. I don't know anything about the play, but what what a name. Jumbo Muffin. That's that's a hard hitter. I know exactly what I'm getting into when I'm landing up against someone named Jumbo Muffin. I respect the heck out of that. We're going to see Slink go head-to-head -head with Jumbo Muffin. That Dark Binding not going to find his target. It's going to be hard to find Dark Bindings on the lot left here. Talk about the mobility with the E. Slink trying to hold back here, but the wave is just building and building gonna be tough jumbo muffin managing that very very well continues to push in with the aggression up by five cs in the top lane right now dropping down a little bit of damage there rainbow madness there the roof does come through as i said it'd be hard to hit but it's gonna be rewarding you can combo with the trap there a few more autos they might find a kill the lot left uses the heal to get a little bit of a speed boost bronc lift not going to find more damage but it's probably going to to back your non-stop action coach danny elastic link shot Combs it there's a cc Sharito, you gotta run ignite up tick tick boom first blood will be gotten under tower good gank there from coach danny I said it at the top of the game. The Zach holds the keys to the car. That elastic slingshot comboing together. So, so vital for them. Good start coming through. Big first blood, considering it looked like they were down a little bit farm across the board. Slank just walking up. There's the face breaker. Looking for more. Dropping autos. These two just going out of Slink. Bit off a little more than you do. Conquer is popped. There's the haymaker getting the shield. Slink gotta run. Not going to have to burn the flash. Jumbo Muffin doesn't give too much pursuit. Still early on. That wave damage is still dealing a whole heck of a lot. Still early on, as we're saying here, not even five minutes have elapsed yet. A lead showing slightly. One kill, up a little bit of gold. Coming out for the side of the Randolph making yellow jackets. Damage drop. Arcane Comet will connect. First dragon is up in 25 seconds. That is what I would keep my eye on here early on. Maokai tossing the old E in the bush. Little sapperling boys. I, I really like Maokai on the composition. It just feels clunky as a support, especially going up against a support that can be as aggressive as this Morgana, right? Uh, I think Maokai's drawbacks and support, I mean, there's not real peel or, or CC. Like, you have that to advance, and you have this place in it, but that's really it. It's nothing like the Morgana, where there's so much uh, in the kit. It's <laughs> Coach Danny coming through again, another last slingshot. shot. They're going to keep pulling Sharito here. Can't catch a break. Sharito running away. One more auto. Trippy does pick it up. Putting this fizz up. You know, going to be a menace. Slink does pop conquers. There's the haymaker. No one thing yet. Slink. The one. Being start. Slink has hit level six. Does have the showstopper level. Didn't even have to use it there. So, great play. Slink very patient. Holds on all. Two level advantage over Jumbo Muffin. Up for CS as well. Looking strong. Picking up the first kill for Hood on the day, and one that they desperately needed. Uh, even though no kills have been had happened top or bot lane, when your team is down two, three kills, 
start to stack up it just it just feels bad like you get put in this dire situation like oh you look up at the score and you think oh we gotta make a play soon and you force rash decision getting that first kill on the board should kind of break the lid for him allow them to get in to the basket get something going excited to see what that kill yields for them momentum wise across the board it's like looks like it's warding up the jungle or just walking around thinking about doing those rugs won't do anything another will go wild left there rainbow mana taking a little bit of damage sapling Sharito still trying to fight still getting gank coach danny just will not leave Sharito alone trippy is three and oh this is a big fish let me tell you slink haymaker jumbo does have ulti available now so you gotta be careful if you are slink Old Flash coming through. There's the showstopper. Jumbo Muffin gets off the ulti just in time. Has to expend the Flash as well. So very worth it for solid and game. More importantly, Jumbo Muffin is going to have to back here. No teleport available. This is going to be some easy money in the CS game for Slank. Rumps. Think about going here. This is a very obvious bait. They don't have vision on the Fizz though. Fizz at 3 0 is going to be a problem. Trippy is very obviously the strongest player of the match now. Has four stacks onto that Dark Seal. Has Corrupt Mod. Already has the Hextech Revolver. That's a lot of burst damage out of nowhere. Uh, the Shock doesn't seem that big when you're reading it. You're like, ah, oh, 72 damage. You know, it is what it is, but it feels a lot more significant when you are the one getting docked. I promise you that much. They will pick up the Dragon. No thievery will happen today. They got that ADT home defense system down on the smite. Trying to cut off Lotlith here. Start finding. Not going to find its target. Broncliff. Not the most accurate to start out the game. We'll see if that change is moving forward. Grump's going to help out the bot lane a little bit. Clearing a ward here. Man, we talked so much about how this might be Shredo's game. And Shredo looked good out the gates. Was denying some farm. Doing this and that. But just got absolutely camped right now. Coach Danny. Very concerted effort to get Trippy fed, and it has definitely worked, Coach Jenny. See, in the mid lane once again, uh, pretty much a second home, and is not even suffering on the CS side. Only one farm down when compared to Grump, so you have to applaud Coach Danny right now. Uh, just playing so, so well. It's, 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 <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just at a loss for words as Trippy's gonna get in. I mean, the mid lane success. Is, is just hinging currently. It's all these coming through. Sharito has to out of there. Fish coming through. Not going to matter. Uh, just playing so well. And the, really, the success of the game feels like it's hinging on Coach Danny once again. Holding the keys to the car. And it's definitely got that car up to a fast start. Rainbow Man is doing a decent amount of damage from Lotlith. Does have Ace in the hole available, but not going to do much with Brian T standing around. Oh, they find the Dark Finding! Rainbow Madness drops the trap, and there it is! The Chain CC! This is what I'm talking about. Maokai can do nothing there, just like Sharito can do nothing here! Oh, absolutely evaporated. Wasn't even invited to their own funeral. Goes down in the mid lane. Maokai got a under tower. Brian T. Who going to barely escape the most infamous hitbox in all of Legends. Rainbow Madness trying to find a kill in the Brian T. Does avoid the tower shot there. Meanwhile, the mid lane tower is being sieged. Ezreal trying to run back to save Brian T. Gonna miss everything there. Warwick running down mid lane. Grumps trying to find something. Here's the clap. Slink coming through. They've They've been caught asleep here in the mid lane. Can they find Coach Danny? They're going to need a face breaker, but the chilling smite is used. No chance of catching up to that. Storito was in tow. Not going to find anything there. Trippy backing to use some of that well earned gold. Clearing a ward there. Five to two here early on. The Yellow Jackets playing well. No doubt about it. They definitely have the lead. Randolph making looking good against Hood right now. But it's still close. This is very much still a game. If you're Hood, you have to be encouraged by what you're seeing right now across the board. Sharito ducking out of there. There. Up. Oh, Sharito tick tick boom on the but Warwick coming in the back end. Can they find a kill on the crackback? Grubs coming through, drops the ulti. Suppression drop. Coach Danny still is passive. Grubs, that's not where you want to be. Oh, goes down. And True Shot Barrage is going to be wide left there. Not going to find anything. This tower is as good as dead call in the wrecking ball. Woo. 
Coach Danny still camping in the mid lane. Looking like Bear Grylls out here. The survival instinct on a whole nother level. Oh my goodness. Here comes Slink though. The minion wave is small. Slip and slide right through. Does get the face breaker off. Ooh, Slink. You don't want to be there. Oh, the face breaker though. Coach Danny still is passive. Do not risk it all just to knock the passive. I promise you it is not worth it. Rainbow Man is taking a little bit of damage. Hood hope relies in this bot lane right now they have the farm lead they have the kill lead most importantly they have the gold lead this caitlin morgana combo is their only real chance facebreaker coming through there's the haymaker does a decent amount of damage and we're gonna see a lane swap come in Chirito will be sent to the top lane dueling with jumbo muffin we see slink go mid to deal with trippy see if this is prosperous for them but Chirito gonna go very low Oh, hops right back through, uses the ulti, Jumbo, gonna pop the ulti, dives, flashes under, tower picks it up, Jumbo Muffin, beautiful play there, knew exactly how much health they had, pop the ulti, getting it done on the top side, Brock Liv, still not finding, oh, does find the dark finding there, as I said, most infamous hitbox in the game, Jumbo, they know they don't have ulti here, Grumps trying to find the kill. Spindle went through the wall. Grumps cannot give any pursuit there. Jumbo Muffins will probably escape this, but pursuit continues. You see the war chasing through the river. Not going to happen. I like what I'm seeing from Coach Danny here. Coach Danny has assessed there's one threat on the enemy team. It's the bot lane. Let me deal with that. Alas, oh, things are coming through. Gonna get a boat. Pops to Alti. Support goes down in her rainbow. Man is picked up by Lotlin. A snipe from the back row scoops it up. The only thing on their mind is Dragon right now. This will even the Dragons up at one a piece. And Earth Dragon and Infernal Drag respectively. Hood came out swinging, but they've lost a bit of their momentum. Coach Danny has just been so dominant this game. Piloting that Zack to perfection. Gonna need a big concerted effort here in the second half of this one. We're 13 minutes in. It's getting dire for Hood. They're gonna need a big second half of this game if they want a shot. It's just so tough for all of your squishy champions. Just, if you if you see Trippy, you're probably dead. That's the issue right here. Coming through, dark finding, knocking him down. Franklin also falling short there with the W. Dorito. So far, the lane swap has not been prosperous. Jumbo Muffin is up a kill post swap. And here comes Trippy Shirito. Slip and slide. Trying to get through, but probably dying in the tower. Tick, tick, tick. Boom on that ignite. Trippy does pick it up. 11 kills to 2. 20k gold to about 18k. The lead is steadily growing. Rainbow Madness and Broncliff alongside Slink are the real hopes this match. Slink still holding a perfect KD8 at 1 0 and 0. Can they potentially build off of that? They're sending Slink to the top lane here to deal with the push. Something they have to do, but it's going to leave mid lane open as that wave pushes in. First tower already gone in the mid lane. Let's see what Slink can do. 2v1 under tower. Piecing up Jumbo Muffin. Does proc conquer there, but it's a big good flash coming through. There's the ulti from Fizz. Face breaker, haymaker. It's not going to be enough. Slink another haymaker. Nothing can be done. A big dive in the top lane from the three of them together. We'll get it done. Grumps, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Walks into the 3v1 situation. Ezreal coming through. Big plays in the top lane from them. Brian T going very low. Might just want to pop that ulti there, Rainbow Madness. Oh, might just want to pop that ulti. Has it available. Decides not to use the ace in the hole. And they're going to let Brian T just walk out of there for free. Small decisions like that. I'd like to see Hood improve on. If you pop the ulti, if you pop ulti at any point in that fight, uh, you can try to chain the C together, right? So there's no chance to block the shot. And you have yourself a kill there in the bot lane. That's your last hope. You do have 109 farm. Uh, the most in the game. And it's on your ADC. So you have a shot. But you got to do something here. And do something quickly. And get some more kills. Uh, this this Caitlyn can get big. But you got to do it very, very soon. As Rift Herald will be dropped in the top lane. For the Yellow Jackets. Making, making it happen there. In the top side. Scooping up another neutral objective there. Two for three on those tonight. Quick back from the Caitlyn. We'll see what this yields. 
backs across the board as here comes that gang. Trippy. Good micro play from Shadow Banners, but this is a 3v1 situation. It's not going to matter. Absolutely bleeding. Tele coming through. Slink. Once again, as we said earlier tonight, you can't perform CPR. They're already dead. They're already in the mortuary. What, what can you do? Slink goes down. Thoughtlift picks up. That's not the final nail in the coffin, but man, it does feel close. 16 minutes in, the gold lead is more than 7K here. Trippy is 10 and oh, oh my goodness. That Magi's is thick, 25 stacks. Charge coming through here. What can be done to defend the tower? Not much. Jumbo Muffin's putting in the autos. Sharito, you have to leave. This spell's doomed for you. Sticks around. A lot of damage being put in. Sharito has to expend the flash spin to win. Not going to find it. Sharito barely escaping with their life. But here comes Grump Sharito. Don't re-engage. It's not worth it. Flash coming through here. Slink running. Full speed. The freight train not going to find its target there. Coach Danny walking right in. Super tank at this point in time. Rainbow man is not where you want to be. Tick, tick, boom on that dot damage. Front clip next on the chopping. Trippy is hungry. Came back for seconds. A fight under tower. There's the showstopper. Alti pop. Jumbo muffins. Fleeing. Barely going to escape, but the Warwick will not. Grumps picks it up. A double kill there. Elastic slingshot coming through. Coach Danny looking for more. Not going to find it. Slink escaping the sole member of Hood to survive the massacre. Whew. What a push here in the past few minutes from Randolph making the Yellow Jacket stand right now. They are out and about, just like the real Yellow Jackets right now. Quick aside, Yellow Jackets, just just go home. The, the life one. I, I'm just trying to drink coffee outside. I don't want you stinging me. I don't want you on my legs. I don't want you inside of my coffee cup. It's not okay. As for the Randolph making Yellow Jackets, what they're doing right now is very okay. If you're a fan of them, if you're a fan of the Hood Blazers, not so much they have a 10k gold lead here 18 minutes and some change 19 to 2 on the kills looking like more of the same for hood right now trippy sets a trap and Sharito falls right into it Woo. couldn't have fallen into it much faster took a boat to the middle of pacific the pacific ocean tied some cinder blocks to Sharito's leg and watch Sharito fall 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 they are gonna pick up the dragon second one of the game for them Leading a neutral project was now three to one, maybe, maybe four. To one. I believe they only got one of the rift trails. I don't know if the second one popped off ever. No, it's 18 minutes, it's on the table. So, yeah, must have got both of them there. Regardless, dominant performance right now coming through from them. Bacon is, is, is definitely flexing right now, up 18 kills. Not much that can be done from Hood. As we said, their sole hope was Rainbow Madness. And they were at one one, but at one and three now, trippy red trippy red buff is just too much to handle for any squishy. It's so so hard. Uh, <laughs> what can you do when there's this stupid little fish just popping in the back line? Can't take damage once you pop the E, blowing up everybody. Has an AOE knockout ulti. There's just so much in the kit that when the fizz gets fed, when the fizz has 25 stacks on the magi's, not much can be done. Uh, and that's that's just the feeling right now around hood but of course this is a best of three four reason they do have time to rally once again the fortitude the mental toughness of hood will be put to the test at the very worst they do have more vod reviewing to do and you know what it only goes up from here once again we, we've said it every week with hood and it's true and i've, I've liked their picks and bands here i liked how they played they went up against a bit of an unorthodox composition one that did really work brian t in the bot lane playing that maokai support somewhat well you know we come to the late game oh oh and two you know not not the most not the hottest line but it is a perfect kda and across the board you see three kdas from the yellow jacket frog lip got our run Caitlin just gonna back out there rainbow man is saying yep there's nothing i can do for you bud so long till we meet again trippy scooping up yet another kill 14 0 and 3. danny might get caught out here sling can they stop the last thing from happening cannot do it grumps going low will 
have to pop the all be still no matter coach did, does screw up the kill at the end fans diving tower what can he even do about that not much as you see jumbo muffin popping the ulti popping back in shut down gold that's a start slink find something Sharito going back in on the coach danny he might be able to find coach and the red buff here and he does pick up the red buff does get the kill as well slink trying to find some damage elastic slings off gonna be killer oh misses the face breaker coach danny popping back in i want more i'm hungry coach danny finishes off the 2v1 25 kills to 3 coach danny 6 0 and 10 right now by goodness as we said three perfect kdas across the board for the yellow jackets a 6 0 10 zach a 1503 monstrous fizz and a 0 2 brian t on the maokai Woo. sieging the mid lane now coach danny <laughs> all, all those abilities there hit but morgana just kind of tickling not much that you can do to a zach that is this thick at this point in the game Hood College needs a miracle right now. An absolute miracle. We're going to see if they receive it. Uh, they need a, a Baron Steel. They need an Elder Dragon Steel. And then maybe we can talk about them winning a team. But it's dire straits for them right now. Down a whole bunch of gold. Down 22 kills. Staring down a 15-0 and 3 Fizz. Only getting stronger. Has that Sheen. will probably be building into Lich's Bane very, very soon. The damage is getting off the charts very quickly. Grumps here. Oh, no. Oh, no. You didn't want to see Trippy 101. Does miss the ulti. But the worst part is it wasn't even one-on-one. Three-on-one in your own jungle. Lotlith is there. You hate to see it. Even your own backyard is in bested with yellow jackets you can't go anywhere without being ganged up on by them Woo! top top game for hood this baron about to fall there's nothing that hood can do about it they're not in position and look at trippy trippy is zoning one member is able to zone off the rest of the team i guess trinomir is pushing bottling he's taking rainbow weapon. one fizz can zone off four members of your team that's an issue within itself right there. Obviously, you can't contest this Baron. You just have to give it. But just looking at the minimap really tells the story of this game. Seeing how teams are positioning right now. They do end up taking the Baron. It will be on all five members. Keep your eyes on Trippy for the top side. Trippy might go in for this 2v1 willingly. Slink. Fearing wards. And here goes Trippy. He knows it's a 2v1. Going in. Pops the ulti. Scoots on out of there with the E. Not going to risk the perfect KDA pitching shutout right now in the death column. Absolutely historic almost game in season zero here with NEC. Trippy. They do pick up the dragon. They are forcing the issue across the board. 24 minutes in there on soul point right now. They do have the Baron buff to. Ooh, we're gonna see how expediently they can finish off this game uh and, and if you're hood you gotta think their mind is already drifting to the next game as we're gonna see trippy here caught out Ooh, ulti pop from broncos does go into stasis but can't get any further for how far ahead they are trippy is playing somewhat passive coming through here that's what i like to see coach daddy said let me get in there oh what a coach Danny! wow catches everyone there's the triple trippy the quadra rainbow madness the last one alive trippy can they pull it off flashing through into fountain trippy is not gonna be able to complete the penta it looks like the caitlin remaining they do block the ulti coming out of base now there's the elastic clean shot is the timer still up they get it are they gonna give the penta oh they do trippy 20 kills gives the first death gives up the shutout but tosses a penta onto the highlight reel set that to some music oh my goodness 31 to 4 the yellow jackets they're warming now to end the game they finally do it the nexus falls at 25 and a half with a little bit of change wow Trippy, what a pop-off, 20 and one. 
Last week we saw the Eraser go for 30 kills, I believe, in one of the craziest games I've ever seen. But 21 and 4 with a Penta is right up there. <laughs> and just the one of the greatest college performances I've ever seen. Whew. Whew. Just that's yeah, you gotta let it breathe for a second. Just just think about what we just saw. Meditate on it. Really, really chew on it. Oh my goodness. What an absolutely amazing game. To be fair, you have to give it to Hood. Starting out the game, they look like a much different, a much better team than they have in weeks past. And you saw that in the picks and bands. I really like their composition. Coach Danny with <laughs> one of the greatest assist games I've seen. Trippy obviously popped off and had them candles killed, skilled to have done. But Coach Danny not only set up that early game, pitched the tent, full Boy Scout, full Bear Grylls, whatever you want to say, got out the pocket knife with the totem chip, of course. You know where you don't worry about safety on here. And just went to town in the mid lane, set Trippy up, allowed so many opportunities, kill after kill after kill. So many items were built up. I mean, Trippy is full build ish. I mean, it depends how you feel about control words. Now, it depends how control words tickle you. Um, one full item off a of full build, a fully stacked Magi's, not even fair. Ridiculous. And Coach Danny set up that Penta. The five man Zach Alti out the elastic slingshot. Oh my goodness. Talk about a sticky situation. They're going to be showering off that goo for weeks. What an Alti from Coach Danny setting up Trippy's Penta. They stuck with it. Uh, Rainbow Madness, good sport. You know, tried to hold off the Nexus. Could have just held in the back of Fountain and stayed out the highlight reel, but. Gave the people what they really wanted. Game one in the books. The Randolph making yellow jackets swarm in the end around the Nexus. Getting it done. Hood Blazers set back to the drawing board. Once again, we're going to see if they're able to figure something out for game number two in this best of three series. I like the composition. I like the picks. I liked the early game. Once again, you got to do something to help Shredo in the mid lane. Uh, and this, I think this is the best we've seen Shredo play. Let's give full props to Shredo. Shredo came out aggressive. Shredo was flexing the mechanics early on, pushing wave, getting it done. Got ganked a bunch. There's, there's nothing you can do about that besides hope you get counter gank, maybe uh, ward very aggressively. But even then, with the amount of wards you can purchase, trying to scale up in the mid lane, it's tough. Uh, you can't just keep throwing 75 gold uh, away potentially with how often Zach was there. What I would like to see, if, if the game plan is similar, if we see a bit of a salty run back, which I could foresee in this game, Grumps has to do something here. Grumps has to realize, hey, you know what? Shredo's getting camped in mid lane. I have two good options, three good options. I can power farm better than I've ever power farmed before. Get a big CS advantage on the enemy jungler, and that will show in the mid to late, late game. Option number two, gank other lane. You know what? If uh, Coach Danny is going to camp mid, guess what? I am pitching my tent top or bot. Come to me. You're going to get mid laner fed? Cool. I'm getting my ADC and my support. If I'm getting my top laner fed, Slink could have carried that game, right? And given the resources. Option number three, counter camp. Set up your tent right across the river. Get it done. Counter gank a bit. Your 2v2 is strong. I think your 2v2 is solidly strong early on. Coach Danny is a little more CC, but I feel like Grumps and Sharito combined have a little bit more damage, especially when they hit six. I, I want to see Grumps do one of the things. Didn't feel like Grumps saw that, and the, there wasn't a big reaction. There wasn't a, oh, uh, you, you're putting up rock? Let me put up paper. Uh, it just kind of felt like Grumps didn't react to that as well as they should have. Something to look at in the VOD review once again. We'll give credit where credit's due. Coach Danny, Trippy. Really stepping up in this game. Brian T in the bot lane. Unorthodox support pick coming from a support main. I love the Maokai. 0-0-2. Perfect KDA. Coach Danny. 6-0-5. Perfect KDA. Jumbo Muffin. Managed in the top lane. Fought through the lane swap. Did exactly enough. And you need that. Right? You need your role players. Did exactly enough. Lotleth. 3-1-2. Didn't have a massive game. But guess what? Did enough. Didn't lose bot lane. Right? Kept it even. Kept it close. That's what you got to do. Let the rest of the team take you the rest of the way. When it's all said and done, the Blazers do fall there in game number one, as we said. As I'm trying to join here, but the game lobby does say that it's full. Oh, and we are in. Very excited for game number two. 
chat i appreciate you showing me some love in the comments on the right hand side what a play indeed um man the the, the fizz the fizz pop off was absolutely insane there and we've seen some strong mid lane play i will say you see metas develop in different conferences uh in league of legends i mean even in traditional sports right you look at a conference like the big 10 a lot of big defense a lot of run game you need to have solid linebackers got to recruit like that the same transfers over here in league of legends in esports right if you're in a conference with a lot of strong mid laners you had better either a find some good mid laners whether that's walk on talent whether you toss scholarships whether you're scouting or b you better have a game plan to deal with that good mid lane that better be something that you're practicing because right now it looks like the bread and butter of the necc for if you want to be a very competitive team will be the mid lane that it is what it is it's arguably the mm, arguably the most dynamic position i mean jungle does have its presence felt theoretically more cost than that but you can roam you really control the tempo of the game you're equally close to the neutral objective so there's a lot going in but mid lane definitely feels like it is the position if you're trying to win through a sole position the necc that is where you're going to do it we're just waiting here in lobby getting into game number two if you're just joining us in game number one but first of all you missed a good one you're gonna want to go watch the potential clips i don't know if anyone clipped it you're gonna want to watch clips no one clipped it you're gonna want to watch the vod you don't watch the vod anyway but you missed the randolph making yellow jackets taking care of business against the hood blazers hood did look good early on though they kept it together very impressed with their picks and bands not exactly what we've seen from them some familiar picks i believe we've seen the set the caitlin the set the caitlin and the morgana before i don't know if we've seen them all together but i really like the morgana plus a kali pickup black shield on assassins just feels so strong because assassins if they're fed they have very little counterplay already and the real counterplay is well just stun them before they can kill you guess what morgana doesn't let that happen um yeah like, like to see that a lot coach danny didn't have the best stat line in the game did have a perfect kda but definitely set up the team coach danny and trippy might have co-mvp for that game number one and we're gonna have to see the rest of the series see if one of them walks away with it. maybe neither of them does if hood can somehow rally from that you can color me in press with a bright red crayon uh just if they can come back after that the the mental game just what we saw it's going to be very tough is are we seeing a sub kit is in the game i'm not sure if this is a sub or they're just i'm trying to get into lcs order but sharita was currently in the spectator lobby and we have a sub in that may have just been someone randomly joining i don't think we have the set to private <laughs> the lobby uh <laughs> which which is funny <laughs> um but yeah we're just we're just waiting in this next one uh, these teams elected not to use pro draft in the first match my fingers are crossed that that happens again here in match number two it does make the process a lot faster we like to see it I'm, I'm about that action i'm ready to get back in it that first game got me hyped i loved the team play coming through from the yellow jackets they really really had this game plan coming in and they executed it so well they played around the mid lane they played around their swiss army knife in the jungle zach coming through with the goo it just all worked so cohesively together and like i said when you do that when you pull the composition like that together so well everyone else just has to not lose their lane right when your fizz is that fed it's like well bot lane just don't lose top lane just don't lose and we've got this i i i can carry us stay even or relatively even don't lose a bunch of towers don't see map pressure and we can win the game and that's exactly what happened so just gotta, gotta, gotta let the game breathe sometimes gotta let the game breathe but yeah very excited to get into this next one twitch chat who we got who we got taking it home and give me the timestamp. how long will the second game be are we going with the hood blazers making an improbable comeback they are very very heavily the underdog here or will the randolph making yellow jackets sweep the series making it however long we've been casting three straight weeks now that every game has been a sweep we have not had a single game go the distance charito our boy back in the lineup starting five that's what we like to see run it back baby 
That's the only way you get better is playing against opponents that are at your skill level or better than yours. I am excited about the prospect of this Hood team. Now look, if you're in chat and you're not a Hood fan, you're probably calling me crazy because like I said, we've seen multiple times them just get swept. Not close as we are in a picks of man. The beautiful thing about esports, guys, is that it's so young collegiately. This Hood team is getting so much good exposure. They are playing stage games, essentially, right? This this is this is our one of our premier matches of the week. We're streaming it. They're getting essential stage games. As big as it gets at this level right now on Twitch, they're going to have these VODs to review next year. Some of these players stick around. Guess what? They're going to have so much more experience playing together. You're going to get new recruits. People are going to see Hood and say, hey, that looks like a fun program. You know, let, let me let me see what this is about. I'm excited to see their growth over the year because I guarantee they will not be sitting at this level for long. We do see the Jack or the Zach, excuse me, band out along with the Kane and Ash. On the other side, Nar and Vi will get the cut alongside Aurelia. No Zach this game. What is the game plan coming through from the Yellow Jackets? That is the question. Zach was the key to their car, the match to their candle last game, the baking soda to their vinegar. What are they going to do without Slink? Will lock in the set once again. Matched by Shannon Elise Sin from Coach Danny. All right. Coach Danny definitely has a champion pool that we can understand after these two games. We see the Lee Sin coming through. Likes very mobile jungle junglers that can gank easily. Only difference is Coach Danny is going to fall off late game with his Lee Sin. We're going to see Coach Danny make a concerted effort to try to get in the game here. Whoa! Zillion locked in my dude I love this pick if they're going in LCS order we may have just had a switcheroo here where Rainbow Madness is going man and Sharito has been moved to support I think more likely they just are in the wrong order Sharito will probably receive that Zillion I love to see it just we talked about a Swiss Army knife with Zach earlier Zillion is the real Swiss Army knife in League of Legends in my mind Zillion is a guardian angel right like literally the ulti is just the item guardian angel Zillion does have a speed boost. Zillion has a slow. Zillion has CC. Uh, he has damage, right? There's just so much going into the kit. Can do so much. You see the Morgana run back from Broncliffe. The only changes right now are the Zaya and the Echo coming through from Grumps. Excited to see Grumps on something a little different this game. The Echo, a little bit more dynamic, a bit more of a playmaker. Can put the team on the back a little bit more, in my opinion, than the Warwick. But we're going to see... No champ swap just yet. So, Sharito, I believe, is a move to ADC. Rainbow Madness got shifted up to mid lane. Bit of a switch here. Let's go through the bands very quickly in depth. Zach and Fizz, obvious, obvious bands. Those two champions are the reason you lost on the game. I'm surprised Fizz didn't get banned in the first rotation. Uh, they gave them three looks at Fizz and they selected LeBlanc. So, Interesting that they still went through banning the Fizz. I would argue that's a waste at that point. You see the LeBlanc. You know that they're going to run the Blanc mid. I don't like running a Blanc anywhere else. I don't think that the kid is really suited for anything else. Interesting decision there. They still went with it. They stuck with their guns. It is what it is, right? Uh, on the other side, Nar Vi banned alongside Aurelia. Uh, the, the Nar and the Vi band are, are fine. They're playmakers out of the jungle. I see that the Aurelia is a band that I really do enjoy because Aurelia was touched up, buffed a little bit going like into fun, Worlds bro. here. Aurelia has a 1v9 potential. All right, Aurelia can just, just do that for you. Aurelia can win a game out of the top lane. So aggressive, so dynamic, and it makes even more sense when you consider Jumbo Muffin will be piloting Shen, right? Shen's value is not in lane. Uh, Shen can lane well, right? Shen can do some damage. Shen... Uh, especially against auto attack based champions. You can pop down that W, not be autoed for a bit. Shen's value is in the ulti. So it makes sense banning out an aggressive top laner that, you know, if dominant early can carry a game because Shen is not going to do a whole ton early. That makes a lot of sense when you look at their game plan. The final two bands, Vigar and Ari, the special for Sharito. But as I said, Sharito's not in the mid lane. The whole game has changed for Hood. They have made a, a quick adjustment. We're going to see how it pans out. I'm very, very intrigued to see what this does for the team. And to the actual picks, we do have Slink on set once again. I like that pick a lot. Slink is dynamic. Slink can be a playmaker for them. Echo, piloted by 
Grumps. As I said, I think you can carry a little bit easier with Echo. The gain potential is big. There's CC, there's shielding, there's mobility. This is a hard team to kill, right? Echo's ulti and Zillion's ulti. That, I, this is a hard, hard team to kill. So their engagements are going to be long. They want these long, drawn out fights. That's my personal opinion. I mean, Zaya putting in damage. The longer Morgana's in a fight, the more likely it is that you're going to land the Dark Binding that wins you the team fight. Keep an eye out for Hood to keep these long sustained engages. Morgana, Zaya in the bot lane. We know Broncliff loves playing Morgana. We know Broncliff is experienced on the Morgana. No worries there. Sharito subbed to bot lane playing that Zaya. This is where I'm very, very intrigued. We're going to see how that pans out. Not much else to say. We've only seen Sharito on mages in the mid lane. I do believe moving on to the other side for making the Yellow Jackets. Shen in the top lane piloted by Jumbo Muffin who had a medium game last game. Not not bad. A 2-2-6, two, 3-3-6, two and six, three, three and six, something of that order. Uh, definitely six assists and even on the kills and deaths. Did their job. And I think that's what a champion like Shen is perfect for. If you're just doing your job, you're not going to have the greatest set line in the world. But you know what? You're going to keep your ADC live in that random team fight. Or you know what? You're going to turn a 4v4 into a 5v4 on Drag Pit with your ulti. So much will go to the Sand United. On to Lee Sin. Coach Danny. Big pop off last game. Can Coach Danny do it again? We are about to find out. Pick a much more aggressive jungler this time. Still has a lot of mobility. Still has a lot of potential to carry the game. Set up their players in the solo lanes. We talked about it earlier. A lot of people, especially in solo, you like to flame their junglers. Jungle Div. Jungle Div. Jungle Div. It's not always that simple. A lot of times Jungle Div is set up by lane differential. Lanes are uh, lanes. It's so fine. Ganks are counter jungle. Want to do and something that Leeson is adept at because if you get clone on, that's it. Night night. Pop a night quill. That's that's all you got in the jungle. You're absolutely done. So we're going to see if that pans out for them. Moving to the mid lane, we do have LeBlanc played by Trippy. Trippy had a phenomenal pop off. Line. The only question in my mind: How much was that Trippy? How much was that Coach Danny? We're about to find out. Trippy once again on a hyper mobile mid laner can really dive the back line. Has a lot of tricks in the bag. We're gonna see just how deep the mechanical bag is for Trippy here. On to the bot lane once again. We've got the Maokai support by Brian T. Solid last game, as I said, did their job. Ezreal once again coming out for Lotliff did their job. If they're confident in the bot lane, that's why they ran it back exactly the same. The only difference here in the bot lane is Shirito. We're going to see. This might be Sharito's time to shine. Very, very excited here. If you're just joining us, first of all, hit that follow button. There's a lot of esports being cast here. Doing it just about every day of the week. We got Mata. We got Valorant. We got League of Legends. We got Rocket League. I know I'm missing one. It'll come to me. Overwatch. There it is. Not at all. All right. Watch. How, how can I forget? I got the trace mark right here. Bombs away, baby. But we have finally loaded in the game. Very, very excited to see if Hood can bounce back. This is the question we've been asking ourselves two weeks in a row now. This could be the game. This could be the one where we finally see that full potential of Hood. Same bot lane run back from the Yellow Jackets who will be on the red side once again. The Yellow Jackets hailing from Randolph Macon, led out by Jumbo Muffin, Coach Danny, Trippy, Lotlep, and Brian T. As I said, they will be on the red side to start it out. The Hood Blazers on the blue side, led by Slink in the top lane, Grumps holding down the jungle rainbow madness being shifted to the mid lane Sharito, the usual mid laner down in the bot lane along with broncliff the morgana don't want to say one trick but as far as we've seen and they are looking for that smoke level one not gonna find the dark binding not gonna find the feathers there Sharito, not gonna hit they're looking for a level one though they want it they have the dark binding with the morgana they're confident in that alone despite zillion for honestly Kind of bad level one. Uh, Zillion's, Zillion's just like milk the day it expires. You know, like it's drinkable. But ugh, I don't really want to go on level one with that. Uh, you start the bomb and it's 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 just okay. 
it doesn't feel great they are gonna back here don't find anything on the loan they do drop two wards though so that is something that i do like coming out of hood they will walk away with this endeavor with some knowledge uh that's that's what they like more than kills knowledge they're, they're, in, they're in the garage hoarding that knowledge with the wards uh but they are gonna start start top side leash here echo will clear top to bottom we'll see what grump does on that opposite for the yellow jacket clearing out bot to top we'll see if that comes through keep your eyes on mini map keep your eyes on coach danny very active ganking early last game expecting the exact same from them right here trippy red buff this is the matchup we're talking about this in bot lane the substitution rainbow madness what's gonna happen in the mid lane we've only seen rainbow at adc does land that first bomb gotta feel good oh hopping in there trippy get a little bit of damage there is the dark binding something we need to see a little bit more about a brown clip this game not quite the performance they were looking for in game number one couldn't find a few key dark bindings including that level one dark binding not that the whole game comes back to that but man if you hit that level one dark binding and you get the flash off the malachi and even the kill the moment is just so so different the feel of the game is so so different but right now they're focused on this game and they're all not up in farm right here can't quite get it to go trippy not going to hit there dashing in does get the bomb landed on jumbo muffin he calls a sword slank they're dueling it out in the middle of the wave that wave damage does hurt early on jumbo muffin does hit level two before in the top lane now they're all topped off up there hopping in there's the bomb here's a potential gank from Dave. doing under this point in time up the w there Pops it onto a minion with the time bomb. Reset Slank going in on Jumbo Muffin. Jumbo Muffin does it over three. Conquers is proc. Who's that W? Slank in trouble. Oh, there's the Haymaker. Oh, connect the breaker to up Jumbo Muffin. Barely going to escape. Woo. Close one there. Slink nearly getting it done. Double bomb not going to connect. That's another thing that's going to hurt. Zillion against Hyper Mobile Champs is just a pain to play. Some of the least reliable CC in the game. You have to bomb, bomb to get the stun off. It's just tough to do, especially when that LeBlanc is just scooting all over the map. Look, look so much on roller skates. Let's, let's say what it is. So annoying to deal with. Scooting all over the place. Slay in the bush here. Has set the trap. Jumble Muffin. Will they take the bait? Is down a flash. Does have flash available. There it is. Ooh going to use the e there to get out good job holding out of that trippy coming through with the chains flash coming through it's not gonna matter the root is down flash coach danny puts the q right into a minion that's gotta hurt Woo. grump's gonna smite that red buff on the bot side of the map no kids here early on both teams somewhat patient right now said zero kills not quite five minutes so not a not quite we saw a bit of a bloodbath devolve last game i think we're already at five kills by five minutes two to three in the favor of the yellow jackets so who did get on the board early last game excuse me not quite the case for either team right now brian t looking for a spot to toss that after wing nothing really found right now as to the maokai support in my opinion, just ask if you've gone in early on. See a gank here in the mid lane. Grumps. Wanted to see a little bit more of this last game, but trying to amend for it now. They're not going to find anything out of tribute. There's the first bomb. Flash coming through. Grumps. Very aggressive. Speed boost. Drops the E. The chrono shift. Oh, pop. Flash. I'm going to go with them. Going to harvest the Dark Harvest Soul off of that. LeBlanc will be able to escape under tower. A solid gank. Probably didn't have to invest the flash. They're considering didn't get the flash out of trippy still holding on to both the summoners but it is what it is grumps does get a dark harvest soul so not it's not like they didn't gain anything but not quite what you wanted considering the investment that was put in bronklet backing off here Ooh, trying to ward uh, and, and this is what i'm expecting right lot and brian t have to be passive in this land they are up a lot of farm right now 35 to 23 but that the Makai is getting through his yeah still at no kills here six minutes just about 555 on the clock very patient you, you you gotta like that for both teams though uh it's maybe not the most exciting brand of league of legends to watch if you're not fully familiar with the game it's like a low scoring baseball game uh if you don't like pitching if you don't understand the count 
it's gonna be boring as hell for you. Uh, but if you enjoy League of Legends, you know that there's a lot of complexity going on here. If you're watching the jungle path, you see Lee Sin here, especially right now. Looking for this gank bot, but the collapse might come through. Coach Jenny might be in a world of trouble here. Rainbow Manus has to land some form of CC. There's the double one coming through. Coach Danny, another dark finding misses. That's going to hurt. Is able to jump out with the W. They can't find the kill on the Lee Sin, but they may just find themselves a dragon in the pit. Lee Sin is backing off. Coach Danny is giving this dragon over. First neutral objective of the game. Claim by the hood. Blazer slink going in. Jumbo muffin. They are scrapping here in the top lane. Good eating out of the way of the haymaker. Slink not going to find much damage in that exchange. Seven. Zero kills on the scoreboard right now. Grumps trying to try to pick this up. This could actually result in the first kill here. Lee Sin, look at the map collapsing down. The bot lane is there. Grumps, you gotta be careful here, bud. You're only level four. Lotleth comes up. Here's Coach Danny. Some blood will finally spill. Looks like Grubs turns around. Just auto attack to put them down. First blood has spilled. It took us to about seven and a half minutes, but we did finally get there. Slank going in on Jumbo Muffin here. Does drop the W. Can't be auto during that. Slank fighting it out. There's the Conqueror. Ooh, good slip and slide through the Haymaker. But not going to find much more damage here. Just, just two tanks going at it. Old school League of Legends. Tanky boys in the top lane. You got to love it. Oh my goodness. Sharito trying to make up for some farm right here. Trailing us about just about 20 farm under right now. Needs to get back on to that. Get up the CS per minute. Rainbow Man is trying to push in the mid lane a little bit. Got to be very careful with this lead lurking. This is prime Lee Sin time has the kick available is level six and we're gonna see a gank potentially set up here does use the chrono shift on themselves get the e the speed boost out a little bit that chrono shift just the e well oh, haymaker going to just tickle that a little bit of damage there can't find the double bomb coach danny ram you gotta be very careful you don't want to stray too far away from the tower that lee sin is everywhere and nowhere at once and can definitely kill you given the opportunity I'm trying to push out this wave i think they might be trying to set up a tower down here on ram planet just look at the way Coach Danny was trying to play Raven. Is just going to go to the Raptors now. Uh, it seemed like for a second they were going to try to push that wave in and really make an attempt under tower. Jumble Muffin. Slink still just in the top lane. Doing their thing. Ooh, Lotleth. Nearly eats a Dark Binding there. Not going to happen. Coach Danny. What a... Oh, the Red Buff. Go. We'll pick it up. Yeah, some heavyweight fighters there. Hey, don't disrespect Red Buff. It's not free, all right? It's not free. R.I.P. all my junkies that have died on stream to uh, Red Buff and Blue Buff. As we are now 9 minutes and 15 seconds in. Only one kill on the board. The Yellow Jack's the only one to spill some blood here. That might change. Bronklift does. See there. Sapling is tossed on the crackback. Brian T. Doing all they can to keep the distance. Given the how passive this bot lane combo is. Still killing it in farm right now 60 kill on Ezreal you gotta give also some executed minions because that is going to be relic shield picked up by the Maokai to start it out some pings in the jungle look at this awareness coming out from the elves they know where the enemy jungle is they're ping ups and hey hey, hey. grumps is around there don't walk in don't do anything too rash but at the same time maybe we can have a play at the top side look at the positioning LeBlanc Lee Sin potentially moving in they may just do Rift Herald instead but they have an opportunity to gank top if they so choose. Slink does have flash and teleport available. So we'll see how far Slink moves up. If Slink smell this gank coming, Jumbo Muffin popping that W, bringing it over. Slink, these two duking it out. Jumbo Muffin, Haymaker going to take it to the back. Not much done, as we said. It's two big stabs of just slapping off on top lane. But here's Trippy trying to find a gank opportunity. Not going to find much. Slink just eats those chains like nothing. Should be said though, Jumbo does have a 10 farm lead in the top. So right now, the Blazers are getting out farmed by the Yellow Jackets. Despite the kill differential only being one, a 2k gold lead has been earned on the back of farm alone, just about. A uh, Rift was picked up a little bit of gold, but not more than the Dragon Buff on the other side. Ooh, double bomb coming through. Rainbow Manus not going to find it there. Popping in on the Q. Rainbow Manus dueling with Coach Danny LeBlanc coming with the reinforcements. Better late than never, but shows up empty-handed. They're not going to find a kill on to the zillion. 
combo, running away from Slim here. Ooh, Lotlev just gonna pop the ulti, do some damage to the wave, get a little bit of damage down on Shirito. About a fifth H, or takes about a fifth off Shirito there. Lotlev's gonna take a little bit of damage from Brock, but overall, very, very patient game. I'm impressed with both teams, but Coach Danny, I you gotta think, you gotta think if you're Danny, you understand, right? Lee Sin falls off at some point. Uh, you gotta be going in. We've got no kills, we've got no towers. The the game's 2k CS difference, which is massive. Uh, that's a lot of farm difference. Hood not not being as efficient as they should across the board. He's been down a farm, although top lane Slink is coming back up. Only two CS down. You, you gotta think at some point they go in and the point might be does it pop the ulti on themselves. Rainbow Man is going very low. Does get the resurrect off the dot damage. Going to have to be quick here. Pops the E. Oh, good micro play. Oh, but not going to be rewarded for it. The rest of the team collapses up. There is kill number two. And 0 and 1 zillion will be the mid lane. Coming in here. Grumps looking for something. But only going to find an early death. Just like that. Two more bodies on the board. Two kills racked up. They're going to drop the Rift Herald mid. This is an absolutely massive play. How much are they going to be able to get here? This is a lot of free real estate on Main Street. And they are just going to scoop it up. That first tower is gone. Out a doubt. Can they get a Shelly charge on the second tower? That's my only question here. Fight in the top lane. Slank. Jumbo Muffin. Slab of beef. Oh, they don't even get the first tower. Interesting. Maybe... Uh, played their hand a little too early there. Should have went in and saved the Herald to get that last charge off. Most wise pop Herald when tower is about one third HP. They end up just getting some plates. They will claim some gold. So a lot is gained there. As you do see, the gold lead has ballooned to a 3.3k gold lead. Looking to slink Hood back in this game. Slink going evil with the laner right now. Jumbo Muffin has to find some way to make a big impact on this game. And it might be through some clever use of that teleport if the rest of the team can set up Slink with some good warding. Trippy going in. Rainbow Madness. Chains applied. Oh my gosh, the damage coming through. Rainbow Madness. Fancy footwork. Not going to be able to find anything there. Rip pick up the kill we were talking about how patient how slow paced of a game this was early on you blink and all of a sudden there's three more kills on the scoreboard in the span of just three minutes they are getting at it the yellow jacket starting to fly away with this game very much still in it is but we're not even at 15 minutes yet so they just have to figure it out but they have to figure it out in a hurry Blink is where I'm looking once again, once, like I said, but down 11 CS now in the top lane. Not looking great. Brian T going to take a little bit of damage there. Lot left with a solid amount on the crackback. Bronx can't connect with CC. Does drop a little bit of damage, but it's not too much. Absolutely. Still a bit of a slow game. As say. <laughs> Picked up. Oh, chains through Trippy. They will find the CC off the back end of that. Can we see a tower dive here? Going very, very low. The dot damage not enough. Here comes Shirito trying to find a kill onto the Maokai. Brian T going a bit low. Dark bonding will connect, but it's not going to be enough. Oh, Shirito has to flash out. Not where they want to be. Tower dive happening here. The kick coming through. Showstopper getting back on the tower. Big slink play. But here comes Jumbo Muffin. Under tower. Picks up. Can they find another slink? Jumbo slink gets the kill and stays alive. Zillion coming through. Rainbow Madness. Gonna ult a little too soon. Oh, Trippy tries to time it, but can't quite get it. Coach Danny coming through. Tick, tick, tick. Boom. Rainbow Madness. Picks it up, escapes with their life. That is solely on Trippy there. Attacked a little too soon, but I guess hey, if you're if you're coach, uh, coach Danny, why are you coming back in? You know one bomb lethal. You know that Trippy's either gonna pick up this kill with or without you. You're not gonna have much impact there. Ends up dying for nothing. The zillion does sneak out. Big sequence of plays leads to two kills gained for Blazers, and they have cut the gold lead back down to 3.3k. Just about 16 minutes in. No towers have been down. However, that mid lane tower is very, very low. And plates have fallen. So we'll see. This next Rift is up in 17 seconds. Obviously, second Rift Herald never as good as the first Rift Herald. 
mostly out of virtue of not having plates to take. Um, it's, it's just up too late, but still valuable for pressure here. If you take down a tower with that Rift Herald, you will be able to create some amount of map pressure, vacuum to some part of the map. So still very bad for both teams. Zoning there with bombs, Rainbow Banish just going to clear this ward. Both teams setting up for Dragon. That Earth Greg will be up in 40 seconds, meaning that we will be having an Earth Soul this game. Brian T just doing the due diligence, you know, the dirty work. Two more wards back of the pit. They might find Trippy here. Bomb coming through, not gonna be a whole just done. Fire. Went for 40% HP up the threshold. Sling in the top lane, going to hold. Interesting here is that Jumbo Muffin has no teleport, has no stand item. Slink has teleport up. This is, in essence, a 5v4 for a hood in the bot side if they want it. Rift Herald will be taken. Coach Danny does that up very play. Just recognize how much time was on the clock for drag. It's now just up. They do give up dragon priority, but they get right second. Featherstorm going through, not going to find anything there. Sharito just gives up a kill for nothing. Resurrect does come through. Here's the teleport. This is the 5v4 we were talking about. Can the TV make a difference? Lee Sin getting in the back of the pit. They can't find the stun, but they do. We got picks up Sharito. Big shit. They pick up the Maokai. Coach Danny gets in! The Haymaker! Oh my goodness, the double kill coming through! Slink scoops it up. They get the dragon. They get some kills. Hood is sticking around in this game. They are not ready to go home just yet. Jumbo Muffin, yeah, just now got the Stand United up. That's a completely different fight if Jumbo Muffin has Stand United or has the Teleport as a 5v5. But instead, numbers of just ghost and oh Dungeon dragon they scoop up their second of the game 18 minutes 10 seconds in this game our first tower has finally fallen in the mid lane still a hotly contested game despite this near 3.5k gold lead for the yellow jackets rump's just gonna clean this up in the jungle across the board however you do see the weakness of Hood is their CS per minute outside of the mid lane there. Rainbow Manus is outclassing LeBlanc in farm. Despite LeBlanc being two one kills, does have stacks on that Mage Eyes. Bronklyph. <laughs> bit, bit of an odd dark binding there. Not not quite finding what they wanted. Find some damage there. As we do see LeBlanc headed bot lane. Lee Sin in the vicinity. Gotta be careful. Shredo Bronklyph have to run here. They can't 2v2 this LeBlanc. I don't think there's any real way. Shirito does get splashed a little prematurely. Here comes Coach Danny and chains are dropped. The kick is dropped as well. Just like that. Bada bing bada boom. Goes down. Shirito. Brockliff. Yeah, no chance in that 2v2 them. So much damage. So much mobility coming through. Not the place you really want to be. The lead grows a little bit there for the Yet Jackets. We're looking across the board here, and we're looking at Hood. And this is something that we've been talking about. Right? Who can carry this game? And right now, Slink is still the best option at 3-0-0. Has Titanic Hydra. Has the tool. I think the big key right now for me, if I'm playing with Hood, if I'm on the comms with Hood, get that first tower top. Open up the map. Rocklift hits a good stun there, but it's not going to matter. So much damage from Trippy. Flashbacks to game number one on that Fizz. Absolutely massive. As I was saying, Slink, you got to talk to me and say, hey, help me get this top tower. Once that first top tower is gone, you don't have to worry about tops so much. Your wave will be pushing. You crack open the map for Slink. You allow Slink to roam and really flex that item advantage, right? 3-0-0, has Titanic Hydra, is built towards other items, has the tier one boots. There's a lot that can be done, but you have to open up the rest of the map because right now, Slink really has to stay in top lane, has to match Jumbo Muffin, and that's a matchup he's going to lose every time across the rest of the map just because Stand United is so, so, so strong. As chat spamming Jumbo Muffin, they love Jumbo Muffin. The Pogs in chat with Jumbo Muffin. We see, we see you guys in chat. We see you. Slink continuing. And Slink coming back in farm. Slink was definitely on in farm. Getting back up to oh, just trailing. I believe it was down as much as 20 early on. Seeing a gank opportunity here. Mirror list Lee Sin going over. Sharito and Brockliff lane swapping with the Zillion. 3v2 here in the middle. Like, 
that few nearly connecting. Coach Danny would have had a big opportunity there. As we said, lane stop, you're going to see Zillion the block down in the mid lane. Rainbow Madness and Trippy still doing it out. Different. Set has back the slink there. We'll walk back with the Mercury Trap. We'll see how that comes in. I think across the board, Mercury Trap is not a bad decision. Uh, it's just not the greatest he will Jimmy. You got CC coming through from Brian T. Sap too slow. Uh, obviously, the ulti does CC puts in place. The block is CC. It doesn't do anything against the because we're going to see coming in here. Feather Storm. Can they get the Feather Recall? Not going to find it. She's going very, very low. And Trippy does get a kill on the front line. Morgana getting absolutely melted. Sharito not recalling the Feathers in time. Going to pay for it. Double kill. Trippy once again flashback to last game. Trippy with another perfect KDA right now. Trippy lost the last game for the, for the glory of it all. But 6-0-1 oh, at 22 minutes. Looking very, very strong. The opportunities for Hood to win this game are shrinking as the game progresses. They still are only down one tower, which they thought they are up a dragon. If they can steal this drag and put themselves on drag point, they have a very legitimate shot to win. Earth Drag is nothing to play around with, especially considering it keeps Sharito alive. It keeps Rainbow Madness alive. It keeps Bronk with alive. So those are the key players, right? It's going to be live. Grumps has some tank because you have the shielding ability to stay alive. Those other players that it keeps alive really help them so, so much. Can they find a steal here? A late engage. They obviously don't have priority, but they're trying to find it. Coach Danny is going to fall off soon. This Lee Sin can't stay this strong forever. This might be a good opportunity for the Yellow Jackets to take a drag and keep them off drag. So, Face Breaker coming through. There's the Freight Train. Slink flash again. Look at the aggression. Double bomb on Slink. The Ball Carrier. Haymaker. This might be the fight the Blazers wanted. Oh, but it turns sour so quick. Slink going down. Let's let this Grumps and the Morgana. They gotta get out of there. One after the other. Like lambs to the slaughter. Double kill. There's your ace. There's your dragon, and another Nellis band into the coffin of the Blazers. The Yellow Jackets hailing from Randolph Macon. Looking very, very good right now. 7K gold lead up, 10 kills, all knotted up on dragons, but they are starting to run away with this game once again here in game number two. And if you're just joining us, Game number one went pretty similarly for Randolph, making big lead. Only got bigger as the game went on. Two perfect KDAs. Big performance from Trippy Red, uh, Red Buff, who went 21 and 6, I believe. Definitely 21. I don't remember the exact assist totals. I mean, it doesn't matter when you have 20 kills and a pentakill to really tie the ball on that game. Impressive performance all around, and they are repeating right now. 8-0-2 on this LeBlanc. We said it at the top of the hour. In my opinion, the meta is really evolving here. It's really becoming defined in the NECC. And that meta is good mid laners. You don't have a good mid laner. You're really not winning games as we've seen the NECC. Trippy going in. There's a showstopper. Ends up being a big one there. Haymaker could do. The shield is big, but doesn't catch all of the opponent. Slink got to run away. Not going to find anything there. There is the faker. Not matter coach danny picking up the kill they're trying to find something here in the mid lane zillion going very low i'm anticipating a collapse here from leblanc and the lee sin coach danny and trippy and root they're clearing out some wards in the jungle awkward positioning here for hood you don't want to caught out you don't want to be slaughtered once again this late in the game moving around this is that Rainbow Madness not having the best of luck with those double bombs currently. Oh, there it is. It shouldn't have said anything going in. This is the engage you're looking for. Brian T going low. Featherstorm coming through. Brian T in the front line. Sharito does get the Zillion ulti play. Should have saved it though for the Morgana. Oh no, Sharito does get activated on the back end. Rainbow Madness double kill. Coach Danny takes one down. And they find this. Onto Sharito doesn't look like it for the time being. They don't have vision on the Echo. So wise to not go too deep. Slink. No, just, just staring down Trippy there for a second. You no, know, they, they respect you. Know, that's, that's that moment in the hallway. We're, we're both trying to go left. I'm like, ah. They kind of just got caught out in the jungle. They're like, ah. 
neither wanting to pull the engage there but regardless big lead nearing 10k gold for the yellow jackets oh my goodness they have come for it and they want more you know, these, these yellow jackets that they pull up just because you're drinking some coffee you got something sweet all of a sudden you, you give them an inch taking a mile it came for the candy and they're taking everything you own right now 10k gold up 12 kills they've got two dragons they're looking for the third baron is on the table and i'm sure that's what's on their mind right now oh my gosh brooklyn nowhere to go trippy picks up another this might be a bait in the bot lane i'm not sure if they want to take slink one on one they will not the one member of the team still put up a solid fight three two and one does have that full titanic hydra working on a specter's cowl item interesting to see slink trying to destroy the tower in time not quite get there definitely deal with the tower first that's the move slink turns around haymaker face breaker trying to get out of there does have showstopper available if trying to go in on jumbo muffin i like to move here being very patient making him take some wave aggro but it's not going to matter there's a showstopper going to go down before he can combo a haymaker into there no shields acquired grumps here in the bot lane going in on jumbo muffin not sure if you want to pick this fight grumps you're four levels down all sticking out of there jump up and probably going to scoop up another kill here unless grumps has the fancy footwork to escape dashing all about grumps where are you going there's no tower there just keep running oh no jumbo muffin gets another one they're on the baron now zilly they're just trickling in jumbo muffin they are just running into jumbo muffin single file like enemies in a in a video game, you know, they, they, they always take their time. You kick on, the next one comes, you pull on, the next one comes. Why did they ever just fight you all at once? That's what just happened to Jumbo Muffin. Jumbo Muffin is Batman in the Arkham Asylum games. One after another. Beat him up. Got it done. Scooped up some gold. Looking good right now. The Yellow Jackets in firm position to walk away with a sweep. Hood once again. We're, we're, we're getting to that miracle stage of the game. They really, really need something amazing. Something nearly unbelievable at this point. A comeback is possible, but they have to change the whole philosophy of how they're playing right now. Trippy going to find a kill. Bronk with nowhere to go. There's the resurrect. Okay. Double bomb coming through. Stunt is taken. Bronk. Oh my gosh. Look at the damage. Oh, eats the chain. Rainbow Madness. Wow. The savior. So they don't give up a kill there on the Bronk. The 053. Not worth a ton of gold, but still. Momentum. Dragon is up. They need to find a way to steal this. They obviously have zero priority on the front end of this, but can they contest from the backside of pit? Doesn't look like they're even going to try. Not in the same zip code that Lee Sin should be able to take it expediently. Coach Danny does have two full items working on the third. Oh, trippy. 1v4. Will hop out of there. Does get the flash from Rainbow Madness. So it has to expend the flash. That's well there. Trippy going back in. Oh, Sharito. Feather recall. Tick. Tick, boom! Oh, the resurrect. This big double bomb. Diving tower, potentially Coach Danny thinks about it, but everyone will survive. Rainbow Madness, once again, the much needed hero, Sharito. Going low, burning up, gonna survive. Back to back to back, close calls here for the Blazers. They do survive each time, but I don't think it's going to matter going in here. Grumps going to escape. Their inhibitor not going to share the same fate. It'll get demolished. They're rotating bot side where the wave is pushing in. You see Shen, Slink coming through. A lot of damage. There's the Haymaker. They're going to pick up the kill on the Maokai there. Sharito does pick it up. Brian T will be set back to the base. Still rotating bot side. They have a big wave here. They should be able to 4v5 given their strength, especially if they get a pick. Ooh. Everything missing Slink there. Very, very fortunate to still be alive. Those pins connected. Not sure Slink would be here and not at a gray screen right now. Going in. There's the show stop. Going very low. The shield are going to be big enough to stall. Resurrect coming through from the zillion. Slink boost. Trying to get to the front line. Not going to get there. Rumps rooted and absolutely buried. Rock lift. Really a massive ulti. Only going to land on the Shen there. Ezra ulti coming through. There's the double kill. This long extended fight being scooped up by Macon right now. Trippy coming through. A little bit more damage. They're not going to fight at the flash. Coach Danny 
getting forward. Think the tower dive gonna take it. Dies for the glory of the tower dive kill there. The march to the Nexus continues. They're rotating top side now. Very smart play from this team. They're very patient right now. They have a massive gold lead. They have a massive kill lead. They are up in item every aspect and yet they're still rotating, doing the due diligence, taking it one tower at a time. The real question at this point in time in my mind is, at what kind of muffin is Jumbo Muffin? B banana? Chocolate chip? Blueberry? Personally, I'm a sucker for anything that's a little bold. Like, uh, give me some cinnamon, some nutmeg, maybe a little cardamom if we're feeling hot, if we're spicy. That's that's what I want to know. We, we, we won't have a pull up, but I want voting right now. What kind of muffin is Jumbo Muffin? These are the. Oh, we're, we're getting a poll from the producer. We're getting a poll. I think the good options are banana nut, because who doesn't love banana nut? Chocolate chip, blueberry, and uh, I don't eat a lot of muffins. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm on that. I'm on that low carb grind. <laughs> but uh, you know, Jumbo Muffin may, may change my mind. I may just have to. You know, playing like a beast right now, four one and seven. Team is getting the dub. May inspire me to just get my little bit hat on, put the apron on, and make some late night muffins. But before any of that transpires, we do still have a game to finish up here. Hey. You never know. It's not over till it's over. Coach Danny going in. Broncliff going low. Goes into stasis. No hope for Bronk there. Trippy Duck pick it up. Looking grim for the Blazer right now. Hood. Like we said, the positive all this is they have more good footage to look at. They have so much growing to do. And I'm excited to see where they end this season because... They can really only go up from here. It looks like another sweep is inevitable. They are in on these inhibitors. Brian T. Lotlet going in. Chorito, a very aggressive feather storm. Does get the feather recall. Pulls up through. Slink. Chorito, the only two alive alongside. Crumbs! Oh my gosh, not for long. Not like this, Crumbs. Under tower. Chorito as well. The massacre. Oh my goodness. Cover the eyes of the children. They are absolutely going in. The Nexus is what's next on the chopping block. Can they try to kill a Morgana in the base? Bronco, it doesn't look like they're too interested. The minions starting to finish off the Nexus, putting the finishing touches on the sweep. Bronco stays alive. The Yellow Jackets forge their way to a 2 0 street, uh, sweep, excuse me. Randolph making making it happen here on the rift. Yet another sweep in the NECC. It's been such a fantastic week. Polls polls are down on Twitch. Uh, from, from from the producer of my ear. More jumbo muffin screen time. You just have to keep tuning in. All right, and mumbo ju mumbo juffin jumbo muffin. <laughs> Oh, man, if, if Jumbo Muffin keeps playing like that and the rest of the team does, you're going to see some playoff time, some big screen time from Randolph making the Yellow Jackets look very impressive here. Hood back to the drawing board. But like I said, they've gotten better every time we've seen them out. I really liked their first draft, and I didn't think they looked bad early on. They just have to transfer that early on into the mid game. If they can just really crack down and CS, they just need – to practice CS for like a week straight. Right clicking, uh, understanding that uh, if the tower hits a caster minion, it should be one auto. Uh, if the tower hits a melee minion, it has to hit it twice and then you can auto. Uh, it's things like this that you can really figure out where a team is at level wise. Once they get that solid foundation, they get that CC foundation or CS foundation under them, they can really start to build on top of that. Because I think they have some mechanical talent. They just don't have the items to compete. And it's very evident in the mid game that the gold differential is massive absolutely and two perfect games coming through from randolph macon <laughs> another sweep i mean trippy 12 0 and 8 only in one death last game lot left 6 0 and 8 perfect kde there so much amazing play coming out from them unfortunately this is our last match of the night i know i it hurts me too. It hurts me too. We got to wait till next week, Thursday, to do this shindig again. 
Uh, I appreciate everyone in chat joining in. I appreciate the production crew here with the NECC keeping up with all the twists and turns that come along with running esports league. Stick around, guys. Talk about this on Twitter. There's a lot of exciting things happen happening in the space of esports, particularly with this conference. Go read, go read that Year Zero article. Follow the Twitch. Follow the Twitter. Follow everything because there's so much happening. Uh, I, I follow. I have notifications on, and I still miss stuff. Right? I'm I'm fully plugged in. It's, you could easily hit Twitter at the end of the day and be like, oh, there was Rocket League played today. There was Valorant. There was a sick play. So much going on all the time. Follow it everywhere. Keep up. Like I said, that article is phenomenal. I think it's called, I mean, let me pull up the same screen really quick, just for people at home, the knowledge. NECC Esports Year Zero officially underway with more than 30 schools competing. Super informative. Super great read. That's your homework. If, if you don't read that between now and next week, Thursday, don't, don't come to class. Don't do it. All right? There will be reprimands. You go read that article. Expand your mind a little bit. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next time, keep reading.